Welcome to the PokerStars Arena and the Stadium Series as we focus on the final table of Heat 15 High. Playing down to a winner, cards up all the way. Hello once again, I'm James Hartigan and this is a progressive knockout event with a buy-in of $1,050. It attracted 474 entries, a prize pool of half a million dollars. They came back into day two with 45 runners, a pretty stacked field, and they have reached the final table. Let's see who's still in the hunt. It is Squirrel VIP who will be coming into this final table as chip leader with close to 100 big blinds. We've got some very talented players in this field. Pabritz, Pablo Brito, Swordfish007, Manic Lurza, and Lex Veldhaus is one of the shorter stacks with 39 bigs. They are playing a 65 big blind average. And let's look at what they're playing for with nine players remaining. Everyone's locked up, $4,600. It looks like the winner and the runner up get the same, but remember, it's a progressive knockout event. The winner gets more in bounties because they get to keep their own head price. So we have Gary T20 with Ace 10 here. A stack of 7 million. It is a king high flop. Pabritz defended his big blind with King Jack. Flops best. Putting on the Pabritz. Crisis manager asking, when's the free roll? Nobody tell them. Gary the password is Anfield. For 410 thousand and Pablo Brito still with the best hand and 93% favorite checks it a couple reasons you could check here one is it's Sometimes tough to get three streets of value with a hand like King Jack. Hands that are calling you three times are often going to be better than King Jack, but I think it's mostly mostly to control the size of this pot. And goes for a very small value bet on the river. Hopefully to get a call from a hand like Ace High. See if Gary gets tight. See if Gary gets creative. Not super tight. Not a super tight fold. Didn't mean to uh, imply that. Martin Samuel says, Joe, do you have any insight into what needs to happen to get online poker legal throughout the States? I absolutely do, but I cannot, <laughs> I cannot advocate it. Basically, you have to turn the country off and turn it back on again. Spirit VIP opens the button here with Ace-8. King-10 of diamonds for Pabritz. Flats. Big blind folds. And it is an ace high flop. It's the gut shot for Pabritz. Top pair for Spira VIP. James Roscoe would like to be informed about the free roll sooner next time. They would appreciate it if you told us earlier. I did. I told you the free roll details earlier when it was time to register for the free roll. Yeah, don't worry about that. The Brits now with a flush draw to go with the straight draw and decides yeah, to lead in the, the turn. Yes. So 
Like eight of diamonds would be not very good. Ten of spades technically improves for Brits, but not nearly enough. I wonder how much Spira is going to be worried about King Queen. I would assume not that much. One point two million is a value bet. Almost full pot. This feels like it's gonna be an ace so so often. I don't know how often it's gonna be a bluff. What bluffs are there that you're beating right now? Like Queen nine, pocket nines, pocket eights. I just feel like all the hands that are raising in late position are going to have a 10 beat, and Pabritz does eventually make the fold. <laughs> we didn't give him enough time to get the uh, free roll password onto all the scammy message boards. Oh, no, what a shame. By the way, when the uh, complaining continues, Joe crosses off another letter. That carries over to next week, Joe. Guess what, guys? We're down to just a roll. It might not even be free anymore. Davidov with all the bounties. Nearly $5,200. And that bounty is in play. Few players have got Davidov luck covered. So could potentially get that $5,200 prize. Oh, look at this needle from Hypercube Dan. Free roll was great. Ha <laughs> ha, throwing mad shade. Check to showdown and Swordfish 007, Manig Lurza, an EPT champion, wins that one. We have Lex under the gun with pocket nines. Limps. Nice to see that Mr. Veldhaus occasionally employs the Gibbons. That's right. How, how very Gibbonsy of him. Folks who are regular viewers of uh, Lex's stream, is he a nines? Ascriber? Does he as ascribe to the school of nines? Does he like them? Does he hate them? Are they the stars nuts or are they trash? About well, to Spirit find out. VIP has three bet here with ace ten of hearts. And we'll see how Lex responds. He calls and flops a set. It's second pair for Spirit VIP. Oh, it's so fun. Never gets old. Flopping a set. So good. Spirit Real... continues for 444,000. Real dicey board. You know, you're, you're very happy to flop a set. You think you have the best hand, but there are lots of turn cards that are going to be not very good for you. Mike's doing his best to pile it in while he likes his hand i don't even see how uh lex is never going to be jamming worse than a 10 here i don't think what are the worst hands like a like a 10 jack is he gonna have 10 jack ever here yeah this is where Nick again rebat spirit now starts to think it must be diamonds right pair of tens is good He's doing this with diamonds, right? Yeah, I guess he would have to do this with big diamonds. Ace, queen of diamonds. Is a 10 even doing that good against an ace, queen, that well against ace, queen of diamonds? Ace, jack of diamonds? Nah. Spirit folds and says, I'll watch it on the stream soon. 
Wow. Blocks of tissues for Spira and the alarm clock. Boo, says Lex Veldhaus. I assume Ooh, they know off each there. other. <laughs> Spira opens to 220,000. We see pocket sevens for Manig Lerza, who calls. No seven yet. As you know, Joe, from the fact that you had to leave at about 3.30 in the morning, when Manig Lerza was the final table of EPT Monte Carlo, it went the distance. I would just politely ask him to keep this one moving along at a faster pace. Luckily, I don't have a flight tomorrow. Spirit. With the best hand, bets River, 463,000. And Lerza faults. Well, I see Ace King here for Davidov Luck, but it's Pabritz, Pablo Brito, who starts the action with a raise to 200,000. Jack 10 off. Just a call from Davidov. I like it. Top, top. Probably ain't going to get much. Gets zero. No big deal. Beats losing. Reminder of the money jumps with the caveat that there is more than one way to win money in this event. Reminder, you get a bounty every time you knock someone out, but ninth place is 4,600. Eighth is 6,300. Big jumps all the way. 41K for first and second. The difference between the winner and the runner-up being the head prize money. All of the payouts of this final table. Scrolling along the bottom of your screen. Queens, Jeez, commanding favorite here. There's like 34 cents difference between first and second place. Like this can't possibly go on as long as it did yesterday. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't say there's like, there is 34 cents difference. Yes. Human calculator. Nailed that. Oh, enjoy this blind level while you can. It's going to go to 61.20 soon. PM. Getting frisky with Ace-5. Krakukra. Konstantin Maslak, former scoop player of the series. Huge favorite on the turn. Has a lock on this hand on the river. Let's see if PM decides to fire again. Krakukra has less than pot behind. Totally conceivable that PM market has a nine. Just at this point, can you get queens to fold for any amount? Ops not to go for it. That's 638,000 on the river. And PM with just a pair of fives to go with the nines on board. Krakukra betting 
Almost half a stack on the river. Wow. Big Mio. Mio notices Ace-5 thinking of bluff catching. I don't know if there's a ton of bluffs out there, I guess. I mean, yeah. We've been pretty hero of a call coming, that size bet coming from that size stack. Um, so while we are still at the 50,000, 100,000 blind level, Joe, let's, uh, let's see the human calculator at work. Let's start with Lex Veldhaus, shall we? Everyone's hero, the people's champion. How many big blinds at this final table is Lex currently playing? Lex is on 39.8129 big blinds. Okay. Um, EPT Monte Carlo 2019 champion Manigloza, a.k.a. Swordfish007. 48.88039 big blinds. That's why we call him the human calculator. Uh Krakukra, who's won two hands in a row now, after posting the small blind, what is his stack? 36.57104 big blinds. I don't know how he does it. David of Luck has opened with Ace King. Lex has got King Queen suited. And three bets. Very likely to get shoved on. He does and wisely lets it go. So it is Spirit VIP who holds the chip lead right now with 8.8 .8 million. David of Luck second in chips with 7 million. Gary T20 opening with nines. It's just one more big blind. Just flick it in. Let's flick it in. That's what the squid would say if he were here today. I flicked in more than one big blind. Try 7.625 big blinds. <laughs> A re-raise from Pablo Brito and Gary with the decision. Do you think Gary T is Gary Turnbuckle? Oh, that's a good shout. Top pair for Brito. When you uh, when you re-raise with Ace Eight here, right, and then you get called, you're like, and then you hit your Ace, you're like, ugh, maybe I'm, maybe I don't have the best hand. Look at this tiny bet. Four hundred and fifty k. Quarter pot bet. And I don't even know. Like, I want to say, like, oh yeah, you'll get all the information you need from this. And I guess. I guess he did. There it is. Just going to do a little bit of research, Joe, while you talk us through this hand. It's over. Are you done with your research? No, keep going. Uh, pocket deuces for PM Marka. Uh, not Gary Turnbuckle. Uh, yeah. I say something. Smile. We got to get our hands in these chat logs. They could be saying anything. Pabritz raising. Oh, you're back? With the 10-9. Yeah, yeah, no, as soon as I realized that it wasn't Gary Turnbuckle, I basically completely lost interest in this player. <laughs> Gary T is a real puss. Pocket nines here for Pablo Brito. Raises to 200K. Gary T, pocket fours in the big blind. How do you play now this you elbow? Defense. Oh, set of fours. 
Does not have Brito covered, but would all but eliminate the Brazilian player. Yeah, they are pretty even in chips. 5.6 million versus 5.1 million right now. And Brito will be feeling pretty confident with an overpair to the board. Bets 350,000. Is this a check call or check raise spot for Gary? I think facing a late position raise, I think you can just call. There's no flush draw. I think Gary your opponent's going to be... To go for value makes it a million. I think your opponent's going to be continuing with a lot of paint, right? Like a lot of just ace, x, king, x, queen, x. And this is not the kind of card you want to see. But again, I think their hands are more weighted toward... Um, you know, pairs and Broadway type of hands. So unless somebody was getting super out of line pre-flop with a hand like 8-7 or 6-9 or something, this really shouldn't be that terrible of a turn card for you. Okay, so having check-raise flop, Gary now bets turn for 660,000, gets a call oh. nine on the river! We have got set over set sickness now as Pablo Brito <laughs> rivers a nine. <laughs> oh, that's real. That is real. Both players with roughly pop behind. That is that is really awful. I need I need to go brush my teeth. Gary bets nine hundred and ninety thousand called. And Pablo Brito takes the chip lead, 8.9 million. And Gary down to 2.4 million. Oh, that's disgusting. Davidov Locke has uh, What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing with fours here? Gary with Jack nine flats. Lex with Queen eight in the big blind. Fold. I need a mint after that. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Gary. Gary with top pair, a set of fours for the second hand in a row. So we're in a situation here where Gary lost a ton of chips with a set of fours and now could lose the rest of his chips to another player with a set of fours. Get your Fs out in chat for Gary. That's all I have to say. Pay your respects for Gary. Pocket four is his ultimate demise. He will never be able to look at the number four ever again. We can see that Gary is now drawing dead. He checks the turn. David of luck. Can't even we'll turn be, an over card. We'll be thinking about that bounty. We'll be thinking about getting the lot. All of those chips and the $2,890 head prize. 750K. It's getting expensive for Gary. And there's just so many hands that Gary's going to be ahead of now. There's just a ton of semi bluffs on this board. Gary gets All it in. in. He is dead. And a call. Drawing dead. River is inconsequential. In two consecutive hands, Gary T20. Blows off a huge stack and is out in ninth place. First player to exit the final table. Cashing for just shy of $10,000 once you add together prize money and bounties. David of Luck now has a 6.6K head prize. And we see Krakukra, Konstantin Maslak opening here with Ace-9 of Diamonds, running into the Ace-Queen of Lakendon, who three bets... Man, I don't think I'll ever forget what just happened to that guy. <laughs> Down to eight players now. And Pablo Brito is disconnected. I mean, hopefully he can get back in time for the next hand. I can't imagine he would play Queen 8 here. Yeah, good hand to disconnect on. 
Queen eight offsuit early position. What a luck box. How do you respond with ace 10 suited? Got it. Call. Good. I'm writing that down. It's going in my notes. It's going in my notes. King Jack of Diamonds versus Ace Ten of Spades. Manic Lurza drawing dead after the flop. Second nut flush for Davidov. It doesn't even get a bet on the flop. Blinds now 60,000, 120,000. Now, as we're following the free roll, and a reminder that we are in delayed time, 142 players remain. We will drop by that event when we get down to the final table. And they are playing for that top prize, the $5,200 grand final ticket. Queen on the turn. Now, top pair for Swordfish. <clears throat> Open-ended as well. You're just like, please, I don't want two pair. In this situation, you even know you don't want two pair. So I think we'd like a bet from Manig. Too many exciting hands. Yeah, I said we would drop by the free roll final table. Not sure we're going to spend any extended amount of time analyzing the play. As we see, Spirit flop two pair. I actually think by the time people get to the final table, the free roll, it, it could actually take a little while, right? I mean, I know that it's going to be relatively fast structure, but, yeah. you know, with, with that top prize on the line, people may actually play pretty well. I'm displaced, says, who is guest today? We are actually in just under an hour's time going to be revealing today's guest commentator as a new member of the stadium series crew makes their debut king on the river not enough Wilder Joe just scored an $11 ticket in the free, free roll. Nice work, homie. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, I think this is extraordinary great value for everyone who took part. 648 players, Joe. That's how many managed to get into the free roll. And there are 500 prizes. So only 148 players, a very, very small percentage, bubbles. If you did not cash in the free roll you're the worst like just give up <laughs> don't even you couldn't make the top 80 percent of a poker tournament <laughs> retire find something else to do with your time okay just i know we joke about always <laughs> playing results but what if you got it in with aces against like queen three and lost it's just not the game for you just find okay. a different game that's fair. Universe That's is fair. trying to tell you something. Your time would be better. Hey, maybe you're going to create the COVID-19 vaccine once you realize that poker is just not, not the thing you should be spending your time on.
Tigsy lost with Kings to 510 suited. Yeah, look, go out into the world, discover a new continent. <laughs> You're going to do great things, but not in poker. Oh dear. Pocket Queens for Pablo Brito opens to 240,000. By the way, just going to throw it out there. When yeah. you go off in search of a new continent, please wear a face mask. Yes, absolutely. And a life jacket, probably. I don't want to infringe on your freedom not to drown, but you should probably also wear a life jacket if you're going to be cruising into uncharted territories in the oceans. That of 780,000. Managlerza with just ace high and no real draw. Let's it go. All right, so we got all so the let's... bosses bunched together. We got Davidov, Pabritz, yep. Spira. Yeah, um, you've probably noticed that Lex has actually dropped down to last place on the leaderboard. He is the shortest stack at the final table now. Yeah, pocket kings. Are we going to see a Lex Feldhaus all in before they go on break again? <laughs> Poker enthusiast, maybe you need to get a little bit more regular and you'll make the free roll next time. James Hardigan, same time every day. Clockwork. I wish that were true. Pabritz <laughs> opens here with pocket jacks. 240,000. Lex throws away the ace 9 p.m. with queen 10 of spades on the button. Oh, let's not overanalyze this guy's bowels, please. As we get 9 8 4 flop. You know what they say deuces never loses. Over pair for Pabritz. Feeling pretty good about it. 300,000. Uh, making a straight here would be a real tragedy. Six. Oh, wow. Five, six does have outs. Oh, no. Oh, five, six. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Oh, no. Anywho. Looking I'm not good enough to hold there, the but I'm not lucky enough to make my straight. So it's kind of a lose-lose for me. But the seven is always coming. So PM Marker has to decide whether to chase this straight. 20% equity. Calls oh. and gets there. And it is a set for Pablo Brito. A no good set. I mean, look, open ender is going to be, you know, a 10 is going to be a pretty big part of Marcus range. So I think Brito finds the fold after he puts out this relatively small bet. Yeah. Um, I think that, that he gets away from this. 720,000 into two and a half million.
You're just getting called by all of the tens on the turn, of which Mark is going to have plenty. Yeah, Joe, how good's the five six fold now, right? Pretty There's good. The raise. And this is just like side fold spot. Any ten is beating you. And five six. Good point. Makes There's the fold, the good fold, and that will see the final table players go on break. We have reached a hiatus in Heat 15 high, the 1K progressive knockout event, eight players remaining. And we'll pick up the action at that final table in the next few minutes. But a reminder that we are doing something a little bit different. As a kind of teaser for future weeks, when we bring you Stream Team Sunday, we are showcasing some of the Poker Stars casters and what they get up to on a regular basis. Right now, Lex, Spraggy, Finton, AKA Easy With Aces, and Xflix, Felix Schneiders, are streaming the Stadium Series Weekly Final. And for the next few minutes, we are gonna sweat with Easy With Aces and follow along with Finton Hand as we join his stream. Sometimes can end up being super long. We started late today. I'll be honest, I was watching Lex like everybody else on the platform today, I wanted to see how the man got on. I wanted to see how he did. <clears throat> I wanted to see how he got on and uh, we ended up getting on a little bit later. But now we're on and we're going to be playing the 2K. We're in the 1K. We've won a few pots already. Is this light going? Oh, okay. I guess we are streaming in the darkness tonight. Well, yeah, we've had an okay start in the 1K. Man, it's, it's, it's so true. Like, everybody, like, all poker pros, we all go on about how we want more freeze-out tournaments. And Stars have listened, and they've whacked in these massive guarantees in a freeze-out format. But then, if you end up busting the freeze-out, you're absolutely devastated because you can't get back in. It's obviously a double-edged sword, but obviously, given that it is a freeze-out, given that it is a $1.5 million guaranteed freeze out. That means we're gonna have a lot of players and that means we're likely to see a lot of players. It's, it's not gonna be the same, right? When, when it's like a tree re-entry tournament, a lot of time we see the same names at the end, but like you're not immune, like no matter who you are, see Darwin, one Connor B1, Lena, all the usual suspects. If they bust, they done, they gonzo. And there's nothing they can do about it. So hopefully, Hopefully we can get a stack in one of these. I didn't get even a sniff last week. I didn't get anything going in last week's finals, which was a little frustrating. We did make day two in the millie though, so I can't, I, can't, I can't be saying much. Corbin Poker in the house has not caught the stream much lately. Hope you're well. Let's win all the trophies. I'll take one of the trophies. I just want one. I'm not greedy. One stadium series to put inside the cabinet alongside my scoop title. And... Uh, that's what we'll be happy with. But then I want the W cube, right? Then we we, we just want them all. Uh, given the line that I've taken here, I think I could have check raised flop. But given the line that I've taken and the fact that he can still value back King Jack, Ace Jack, um, I would say that's like the worst hands he's gonna go for. Uh, and we don't block like the nine tens. We do block queen ten, which is a little bit annoying, but yeah, we're not full in here. Ugh, he has a jack, dude. Uh, nobody bets one third. Here with an eight, I don't think. Question is, do we raise? I'm not going to, but I do think he just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you right now. He's got King Jack of Spades. King Jack of Hearts. Why are my reads so bad? Why can't I get the suits right, Arlo? Why can't I get the suits right? So here's the thing. I kind of know what he has. I kind of know what he has. So why don't I raise? Because I don't actually know, all right? It seems like he has it, but what happens if he's just like, what happens if he has pocket jacks? And he feels like, well, he blocks the hands that are most likely to call, so he's gonna go small. Ugh, maybe, do you know what? I need to ask people that are better than me. Maybe I need to just raise his hand. It feels, it feels like I probably need to raise the hand. He shouldn't, for what it's worth, he shouldn't bet that size. 
Like he 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 should just bet fifty percent of the pot or more. Um, just because it like stops him from getting raised. But with the whole team AT beating, I probably should have just raised. You know, because people just don't fold me, dude. They're just like, nah, nah. Um, I'm gonna check this against a small blind flat in range, especially when we have eights, which is one of the hands he would flat. Um, he just connects pretty well with this board. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, very tin on the river, but I'm kind of tempted. So, George de Costas can have, yeah, I'm probably going to look him up here. Probably going to call. Probably going to see a hand that we lose to a frequent amount of the time, but we have to please the big blind because if we don't call here, you can just bluff with any two cards um, if we're not defending an appropriate part of our range. And once George DaCosta checks um, three times, I don't think he's going to have too many calls because he probably wants to value bet like a 10 or better. Um, but in saying that, it looks like... Okay. Interesting. This is really interesting. This is really interesting. <clears throat> Where is young Jorge... Or Yo Joe goes, not George. Jogo de Costas. Listen, man. Nobody ever bluffs, right? Nobody ever bluffs. So why would I ever call? <laughs> because I'm a station and I don't know if young George has it in him. If young George has it in him to check a jack three times and then only go this size. Unless he has jack 10. That would make a little bit of sense to me for him to go this size. All right. Were you bluffing you? Jogo, I feel like you were. Yeah, I thought so. I was gonna look you up, Jogo. I was ready. Also, Ace King suited out of small. It's interesting. It's 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 also interesting that like, I don't know. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Chelsea two 0 against United. What happened? United need to get top four now, eh? Um, what are we doing over here? We have a, the eleven dollar. And I'm not folding. The question is, should I shove? I keep getting these kind of close spots on the river. I'm going to call and we're going to beat Ace-Jack. Sixes. Okay. So again, it's a kind of similar spot. Joe McKeown says, let's go, Finty. I'm trying, mate. I'm trying my best. I want to make more day twos. I want to make more stacks. And we'll see. We'll see how we get on. All right. If you're not, this is a, this is like a, this tournament is like a mythical creature that I don't know if anyone's ever actually won the double deuce, but we actually build up stacks quite frequently. I don't know if you remember, it used to be a meme on myself and Benjamin Sprague's channel where he like lost like a 9 million chip pot one Sunday and he talked about it for four years. Not like Spraggy to talk about bad beats for a long time, but hopefully we can win it. Like it's a $22 tournament and you get $12,000 for first. It's madness. And we also have Mr. Veldhouse, who's not only... Playing on the FT, he's also down to 8 players in the 1k, playing for a whole load of cash. And over here, I don't think I get the raise. I think raising's a little... A little too... Dicey. A little too dicey. Uh, we're going to value bet. The only hand that I'm concerned about over here is Queen-10. And once he checks, I just don't think he's going to have a hand that is better to me almost ever. And we're hoping to get called over here by King-10, Jack-10. Something along these lines. But if anyone raises and more chips go in... Uh, if anyone raises and more chips go in... We're going to fold. I don't really think anyone bluffs here. What's going on today? I'm not taking the Tim bluff raises. But like, what is this size? What are you repping? Have you got Queen 10, bro? Like, is that exactly what you have? Is that what you have, mate? Come on. What's with the mini raise? There's no way that man's bluffing. Show me bluff. Not today. All right, well, no problem. And in the $11, dollar, 
I've just been told that we have some people watching from the PokerStars channel. What's going on? If, if it's still live. I've no idea. I've no idea how long we're going for. I'm not sure if I was supposed to address everybody, but welcome. EasyWithAces.tv if, uh, if you're new here. We are playing tournaments all day. We'll be joining the commentary team again next Friday. To what I will tell... I said it again. I'll say it before and I'll say it again. Oh. Oh, some hands are easier to play than others, apparently. You're drawing almost dead. The king would have been uh, pretty heartbreaking after saying that. But, uh... The production value of the PokerStars channel, if you haven't already checked it out, has been sensational. They've really set the standard for streaming on Twitch. Now, I understand they have a team of people. They're all working on it. But it's made me feel terrible about my setup. And I don't like comparing myself to other people a lot of the time because then you're just going to be miserable. But when it's your work and you can actually just pay for it to be changed, I think I should. So I'm going to see what we can do. I want I want to up the levels of production after seeing that show. Of course, I won't be able to rope James Hardigan and Joseph Stapleton in to do over three weeks of commentary every day in a row, joined by myself, Lex, Spraggy, Sam, and Griff. But we can definitely up the quality a little bit, is what I reckon. Just a little small bit. Just, you know, we can improve it. We have to be able to. Um, we are going to raise it down here again in the double deuce. But I've eight. I don't think I have not busted a tournament so far, which is good news for us on a Sunday when the tournaments are freeze out. My camera's a little weird angle there. But am I missing anything right now? Not really. We do. Oh, we got a two fifteen, a two k, and a twenty two coming up. All right. Well, that two k is actually a. Uh, that two k is somewhat of a turbo, I think. <clears throat> uh, we're going to raise this over the limp and we're going to fold that a7 suited get it out of my sight <laughs> oh god <clears throat> uh, we're going to fold Fedor says hello. I feel like you're one of my Brazilian friends. What is going on? Uh, we're going to call here. Of course, we are going to have a lot of shoit. We're also uh, going to have some very good hands to want to trap here and try and entice a raise. So I don't think people get to go absolutely ham against us. And I don't think I want to bet here. We're just going to check. See if we can turn a little bit of equity. Daily-ish Poker Live updates 2020. And I'm out here trying to get you to read an email. Got to respect the ambition. Yes, I do send emails. They're not daily-ish at the moment because the series we are playing every day and studying every day. But I do send them at the moment weekly, which I know is nowhere near daily. But hey, it's the best I can do at the moment. You're going to have to just deal with it. It is what it is. Writing an email every day is tough. But if you want to sign up for them, I guarantee you that you'll enjoy them or money back guarantee. Now, it's not going to cost you anything. But that's beyond the point. <clears throat> Whoops. Whoops. I made a mistake. One of the things I was talking about. My bad. <clears throat> My bad. Okay, no problem. And I'm not going to talk about it again because I shouldn't have talked about it in the first place. So you're just going to have to guess what it is. All right. You're just going to have to guess what it is. Good luck today, Fintan. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, we're going to raise it here in the 530 Benny Builder. If Mr. Veld has Alex to tree bet me, we would just be folding this hand, to be perfectly honest. And if Morin decides to come in with the re-raise, I'm also just going to get it gone. Queen, six, tray. It's not a great flop. I don't really have much 
desire to go after anything here. <clears throat> uh, Lex is going to come in with a half pop bet. It's kind of interesting. I don't think I want to check raise. Like I just like uh, I just don't block enough of the stuff that Lex is going to have. So we're just going to fold. It's just a it's just a hot garbage hand to be honest. Uh, this one though, the Kevin cleans the pocket king. Oh, how's it going to work out for Finson with the Pocket Kings? There's only one way to find out, and that's to watch Finson on his own channel, Easy with Aces. Spraggy is streaming. Xflix is streaming. OP Poker James is streaming right now. All of these guys playing the weekly freeze-out final, part of the stadium series, while we focus on the final table of Heat 15 High, the 1K PKO. We have got Lex Veldhaus at the table, but he is the shortest stack right now. With 2.6 million. Blind still 60,120,000. Now you can go watch Fenton on his channel. But stay with us. Hang out with us for the day. Fenton's on all hours of the day and night. Right now we are sweating our boy Lex Veldhaus. Who for better or for worse is going to be all in very soon. I was going to say two things about Lex. The first is that how weird that he and Fenton are at the same table in the freeze out final. But also you'll notice that we've removed Lex from the quad box, partly spoilers, but also the man doesn't need any more advertising. He's already crushing it. Lex Feldhaus at a final table in a 1K PKO. They're all there. He's doing all right. I I'm actually surprised we're doing as well as we are <laughs> with Lex being at that final table and streaming it himself, so. Well, here's the thing. If you watch Lex's stream, you only see one player's hold cards. We've got all of them. All the hold cards right here. And we've got a raise from Spirit VIP with Ace Jack. Managlerza, Swordfish 007 with seven Trey. Nah, dog, nah. Just has to make it look like his big blind isn't that easy to get. But it is when he has seven three off. So now it's Lex's big blind, Queen Jack offsuit. You know, and I've been really sick of seeing Scott Goodall's name at the top of uh, the Twitch chat that he's given away the most subscriptions. So if Lex doubles up, I'm going to give away 10, 10 random subs to the Poker Stars channel. The difference is he probably expenses it. That will be coming out of your pocket. That's good. It means more. What a turn card. Yeah, top two for Lex, the diamond draw for Spira VIP. I don't think Lex is going to want to see another card. His hand is GTG, good to go. A bet of 263K from Spira. Really tough to be beat here, but really easy to have a river you don't like. Lex raises to 720,000, but does not shove. Doesn't go for all of it. Oh, Scott, come on. You... I knew it. Spiro able to just call. Joe, how did you think you were ever going to be able to compete against Scott's huge expenses account? Or maybe. That was my plan all along. Oh, you played him. He's not difficult to play. He's... Lex well, susses let's... out that this is a fairly safe river card. Gets it in. Gets the fold. And Lex now up to 3.7 million. Kind of tied at the bottom of the leaderboard with Manig Lerza. And it's Pablo Brito, Pabritz, who opens here with Ace Jack. David of Luck with the same hand, flats. Plus, I figured out that Scott's listening now, so I know. Got him to reveal himself. Gave away his position, lurking. I don't want. To, I I don't want to reveal himself.
Check, check. Nine on the turn. What was our score earlier on, by the way? Was it a three out of ten? Uh, I, I think five. I think five was the consensus. Okay. okay. I want to try and get to at least think, six. Let's aim for seven. I don't seven. think this goes to out. Really? Mm -mm. Sure enough. David of Luck takes it down uncontested. Chip leader right now with 11 million. Round to the blinds. Lakendon with King 10. Raises. PM marker with 9 7 off. I like this raise. You don't give a super good price for your opponent to come along with it. any two random cards, kind of like 7 9. Thanks for the gift sub, Scott. I'm sure the chat appreciates it. He's claiming he's not expensing them. I'm going to need to see all your expense reports for the next three months to verify that. Again, we've got two players with the same hand, but 9-5 does not defend here. Lakendon wins it uncontested. And this is round to Lex with ace, deuce, fault. Round to the blinds. It's a walk for Spira VIP. I'm walking here. Swordfish, Jack 10 suited. Raises to 240k. PM with King Jack. Spira with King Jack. For Brits, Queen 4. I want to see a flop. Line's now 70,000, No flop for you. I'm aware. Thank you, though, for, you know. There's our folds the sixes under the gun. Davidoff defends the race from Lakendon. Lex still Off officially the back. shortest stack at the table, by the way, with 3.6 mil. Wheel drop. Oh, really, Henley Biz? <laughs> Do you know what? Have a timeout. <laughs> Got him. Details of how to What's link your these? PokerStars and Twitch accounts at the bottom of the screen right now. Remember, there'll be another free roll next Sunday, but also you need to link your accounts to be eligible for the ticket drops that we do at random times of day. So just by watching this channel, if you have got your accounts linked, if you're watching the Stadium Series coverage, there's a very good chance that you could win a Stadium Series ticket because we'll just pick viewers at random who've got linked accounts and you might receive a chest. And in that chest will be a Stadium Series ticket. Hey, James, I'll show you a chest. Do you know what's the most frightening thing is I was going to say with all honesty and all sincerity, I've seen it many, many times. Which is true, but also really disturbing. Not again. You've seen it enough. <laughs> I, I'll always remember our trip to Barcelona Zoo, where we had a sketch which involved a gag of the monkeys being angry because Joe, being quite hirsute, was perceived to be one of their own kind who'd somehow escaped and the monkeys couldn't understand how Joe was on the outside and they were on the inside of this cage. They begrudged me my freedom. 
and it required Joe to communicate with the apes using monkey noises. But what we didn't realize is that this would antagonize them to the point where everyone's a critic. The monkeys literally started flinging their feces at him. It turns out that my acting was so good that I did genuinely communicate with the monkeys. And the monkeys were not a fan. <laughs> Davidoff bets with the best hand, gets King High to fold. I mean, I know it's a tough question for you to answer, Joe, if I ask about the lowest moment in your career. But I would imagine that impersonating a monkey and having poo thrown at you in a Spanish zoo must rank somewhere high on the list. I actually just felt really bad about antagonizing the monkeys. Like, I'm not a huge zoo fan to begin with. I find them to be like a little bit cruel and a little bit weird, especially with animals as intelligent as apes and monkeys. And now I'm on the outside of this prison that they live in purposely trying to upset them for a TV show that six people are going to watch. <laughs> so, well, yeah, not, not a highlight for me. Still way out in front. We have got the wheel draw for David of Luck. But I will say that well, it's probably not too dangerous of a card for Davidoff, although uh, Davidoff improves. Uh, not that low in that I still got flown halfway around the world to shoot a comedy sketch to be on television that I got to write and semi-direct and star in. Um, still kind of cool. You know, as far as low lights are concerned, it's still a pretty high low light. Yeah. I just remember that day being tough for a number of reasons, which we'll discuss in a moment. I'm just interested to see if David of Luck calls this river bet having rivered a pair of threes. Does. Heroes and is wrong. Um, there was another scene where you had to eat a burger and for some reason, probably it was Bruce Baggles finding the perfect angle and the perfect lighting. Oh, Lex with tens. Davidov's open with ace five. And three bet gets the job done. So Joe has to eat this burger and is positioned right above the rhino enclosure. And the smell coming out of the rhino enclosure, mostly their excrement, was just so obnoxious. Reggie, the sound guy, literally threw up in a trash can. That's how Nobody... obnoxious the smell was. Nobody wanted to believe me because I was like way off in the distance and I was like, this smells yeah. really bad. This smells really bad. That's and nobody, right. Everyone thought I was from being... a distance. So we're like at the bottom of a hill and you're up kind of on the hill over the fence, looking over the rhino enclosure saying this is really disgusting. And you had to eat pretty much an entire burger while inhaling the fumes, which made Reggie throw up. Correct. Then they believed me. Once the sound guy threw up in a garbage can, I think the line from the podcast specifically is, it's all fun and games until a sound guy throws up at a garbage can. Uh, then they finally believed me. Hi, right, guys. We've got the message, by the way, that there might be a problem with the free roll right now. We are looking into it. Pair of tens. Good enough. Swordfish. Manic lures or ace jack already facing a raise. Even though we know it's the best hand, I feel like a fold is fine. Although against the chip leader, maybe thinks the chip leader is going to get out of line a little bit more often. Does, yep. All right, cool. Well spotted. Spira should be folding and snap fold from the chip leader. 
Well, we promised you we'd introduce a new member of the Stadium Series commentary team this evening. Please welcome to the Poker Stars Arena, Adam Levy, a.k.a. Ruthless, a.k.a. He called me with Queen 10, honey guy. <laughs> It's okay. We've got a we got a huge hand that's about to happen anyway. Hopefully Adam turns his head in time to catch it. Kings against Ace Queen. Great premiere for Adam Levy. <laughs> <laughs> he was writing us a message. That's why he didn't see he was on camera. So spirit. VIP flops a full house. Bets 546,000. Lakendon with ace queen calls and turns oh, no. an ace. Ugh. Oh, I guess Lakendon's got outs now. We have got 5 million in the middle. Spira VIP has 3.5 million behind. All in. The all in. Lakendon calls. That's a 12 million chip pot that goes in the direction of Spira VIP, who has retaken the chip lead with eight players remaining. Let's try again. The newest member of the Stadium Series commentary team, Adam Levy, Ruthless, the guy who called Phil Helmuth with Queen 10. Adam, welcome to the stream. How you doing? I'm, I'm glad to be here. This is pretty cool. Glad to have you with us. And you join us at the business end of this high buy-in heat, a $1,050 buy-in, no limit hold and progressive knockout event. We've got Lex Veldhaus at the final table. We've got Manig Lerza, a.k.a. Swordfish007. We've got Pabritz, Pablo Brito. We've got Krakukra, former Scoop player of the series. Konstantin Maslak. So some online now, pedigree here, Adam. My friend yeah, Adam is, uh, <laughs> is a, sorry, Adam. I just want to save you from yourself because my friend Adam is a very sweet boy. But if there is if there is a, a trap to fall into, he will find it. OK, so I just want I'm not sure if anyone told you, you may know more about some of these players than we do. We don't out them for their real names unless it's well known already so just i just want it just in case you're like oh spur is like so and so um anybody that's like not incredibly well known already we just let them be who they are pretty much whatever you what you guys just said is what i know uh seems pretty Great. cool to get lex at the final table and uh yeah i mean i think i played with six of these guys but yeah i don't liquendon to me is just liquendon i'm not even sure how to say the the name correctly i just known that guy for years or the, the you know whoever that is that's right yeah we're going with they for a lot of these folks too just Fair in enough. case and by the way that uh huge double up for sphere i think is probably good news for lex no longer the shortest stack now I guess he wasn't yes. already with you to Krikura, but there is an yes. even no, shorter he... stack. Lex was, that was a crazy the leaderboard. Yeah, crazy turn card, which uh, obviously saw Lakendon commit more than they would have liked. Who can blame him? I mean, that's, uh, you know, <laughs> his king's there. Just flops the boat and then uh, the ace turns. It's rough. Well, this is all Lex, right? right here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tough for Lex to lose this. And I don't know whether it was folded pre, but I know everyone loves a oh. straight flush. The Jack of Hearts would Why have been I a nice that? river card. Why did I say And that? instead, <laughs> it's the seven that they say is always coming. And on this occasion, it does come, and it gives Spirit VIP the straight um you did it again joe the commentator's curse in full effect yeah 13 percent. 13 percent. i do think of spirit uh what is it spirit vip or yeah uh so i do think that if he or they decided to 
just go three streets here, it would be pretty tough call for Lex if he didn't get there or yeah, on the river. So, but in this case, he just, uh, Spire VIP just got there on the river. <laughs> it's easy. And I mean, it probably saved Lex a, a bet there. In fact, the, that, uh, the, the turn was checked. So Pabritz opening here with the queen 10. Yep, good fold, Lex. Did have a pair. Folding's really as tough. Loco, as Loco has a question, does this Lex character stream on Twitch? I've never heard of him before. He's just starting <laughs> out. Um, just getting his act together a little bit. He only set the record for uh, or for poker um, streaming. <laughs> that was super fun watching him during the, the 10K uh, scoop main event. Sure. I don't know. I think that might have been a sarcastic question. Bez Loco, more like Leb Bozo. Swordfish wins that one. I might have to crank my cooler machine. I feel like it's been a long time since we've seen a disgusting, filthy, dirty cooler at this table. Well, be careful what you wish for, Joe. You just got the opposite of that with a walk. Oh, boy. Well, I tell you what, you set us up for a nice little coin flip here. The snowman's num num for Lex. Raises to okay, 280. A and I'm assuming with that stack size, Adam, that this is probably going to be a shove from Kukukra in the big blind. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually very curious what Lex does here uh, to the shove. I assume it's probably a call because he covers, but... <laughs> yeah. Does make and we're off call. to the races. Ace oh. on the flop. And improves to a flush on the river, and that is going to leave Lex with less than a big blind. Queen nine of clubs, just a hundred thousand chips left. For Brits is open with ace eight. So I used to watch NASCAR as a kid, and they always say like it's just one of them racing deals, and it's just like there's certain spots you're just like sometimes you you just get into a crash or you know you just lose, and this is one of those where he just has to flip and he has to hope that he wins and i mean the good news here is that there's three aces out yeah does have live cards lakendon trying to isolate here and that and he should, should get be rid isolated. of <clears throat> pablo brito so lex will have decent-ish equity Pablo, why are you making our boy sweat? Laquendon has a big bounty for, I mean, the third biggest at the table, right? That's All right, true. yeah, that's something to consider. Well, makes the fold. Lex looking for a queen or a nine. Does not hit. And Lex busts in eighth place. It is a KO. His bounty taken by Lakendon. And prize money and bounties. Lex cashes out for $9,200. And we are down G to seven players. GG. Lakendon goes from se uh, third biggest bounty now to second biggest bounty. Well played, Lex. Always fun to watch you, pal. Maybe you could, um, you know... Give us some of your viewers now. <laughs> uh, Lex still alive and a bunch of other things today, I think, including the freeze-out final. Well, that's the thing. It's not a case of, oh, Lex is gone, and now he's going to view a dump, and we're going to pick up the entire audience. Everyone's streaming tonight. Everyone's grinding tonight. You've got all the usual Sundays, plus the Stadium Series weekly freeze-out final. And all those guys are going to be playing the low, medium, and high buy-in versions of that event. 
Well, this is a fun here. flop for everyone. Two overs and a heart draw for Lakendon. Pair and a straight draw. Top pair and a straight draw for Spira. Bottom pair and a straight draw for Swordfish. I think once it goes back call, you can probably fold your bottom pair in a straight draw. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's just a slight tank. Posh and that is a straight on the turn for Spira. And Lakendon, in addition to the hard draw, picks up the better straight draw. I like the bet by Lakendon there. The last thing you want to do is uh, check and then Kind of have to check on that spot. Looks like you could still have a six. Ooh. And the river is a heart flush. I'm always rooting for the flush draw to get there. No offense to whoever's on the business end. I just, uh, I missed so many flush draws myself. Uh, wow. McKendon goes to get yeah, full value and receives it. it they, they just keep to seem to be trading uh, coolers. Yeah, it is a cooler there. Flush versus straight. Nasty River says check raise flops. So double up for Lakendon. And we've got a 10 million stack, a 9 million stack, and three stacks in the 6 million range. Just good to hear those sounds for me. Just hearing some, <laughs> some poker stars, uh, cards being shuffled. It sounds like paying the bills. Paying the bills. <laughs> sure. Sounds like making your rent. Sounds like better times pre-Black Friday. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it's definitely uh, a sound I, I don't uh, forget. We're going to talk to you about what your life has been like post Black Friday. Once uh, we say goodbye to James Hardigan here, but let him let's let's see how this hand plays out. Pretty sure it's going to go in PM's direction, Joe, with two pair jacks and fives. We need PM the call. The turn is the three of clubs, or that oh. maybe the Clendon. Yeah. Oh, nothing makes me happier than James Hardigan being wrong. <laughs> Ninety-six percent of the time, I will be right. This is a spot with the Jack Five where I think, I, I, like I, I call, I probably call here, and I'm curious. I was curious if PM was possibly going to raise, but just got to let it. Lakendon keep barreling. I think I only ever don't raise on the driest boards imaginable. Like any kind of flush draw, <laughs> any kind of straight draw, I'm raising two pair. Like, oh no, they they could hit a runner on a straight flush. I gotta gotta raise it. <laughs> yep, exactly. I just don't trust it. Well, James Hardigan, as usual. That was an Wait, above expectation cool. yeah, okay. last hand after the flop. They haven't called yet. Yeah. Don't yeah. let them hedge. You can't hedge. <laughs> there we go. There it is. There's the call. All right. One, Thank you. Thank you. One last bit of righteousness for James Hardigan. Get out of here. <laughs> well, that was, uh, I mean, he's one of the best. He really is. He could be the best, but don't, don't tell him that. Play continues here at the final table. Heat number 15. The $1,050 buy-in, PKO. That's a progressive knockout tournament, Adam. That's a, It's just like a regular knockout tournament, but it's uh, uh, pro-voting rights and uh, anti-prisons for profit. <laughs> it's progressive knockout. So progressive. Yeah, Mark of raising from late position. 9-8 suited versus 10-9 suited versus ace-jack. Holy, another wonderfully vibrant flop. I, I call them juice flops lately. 
I don't know. It's like, you know, I just, it's like this, there's, there's action for everyone here. This flop is full of the juice. Top pair versus trips versus up and down. I mean, Kirkur should check call and Pabritz is kind of going to have to do the same thing. I, I would, they're deep. Can you ever just fold? No. It's a 33, you know, like 30% bet on the flop to the button. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I think a fold might be in the future for Pabritz. Because there's no way that PM Marka is folding. And when this raise is met with anything other than a fold, I think you're in big, big trouble. Yeah. Marka just calls. It's a five of spades in the turn. Kakura folds the straight draw. I guess that's best a mistake case scenario. That, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll let What's you do a mistake? The, uh, Go ahead. That's it. No, I was just saying, uh, no, I mean, nothing's a mistake. Kokura made the correct fold for sure, but I find that that's just a mistake that I see a lot of uh, amateur players make where they're, they just, they still have a straight draw. They're like, well, you know, but it's a paired board and you're prop, you could be dead already, you know, drawing dead already. Calling is the mistake most of the time. Yeah. Got it. Well, Pabritz is not letting up. Now, if you're a PM Marka, are you worried at all at this point after all this aggression? Are you worried about pocket jacks? Are you worried about a better eight? Huh. Not that I mean, worried. Not that worried. If you, even if you are worried, you cover. It's a PSKO. You get, it kind of it just is a simple, you got it, you got it. Show me better. I have a pretty great hand for what I just, you know, flatting the button. I don't have many eights in my range. Well, it's all into call for Pabritz. This is actually, this would be a really impressive fold by Pabritz. I, I try I to, mean, I'm covering up the whole cards right now. I try to take the whole cards out of the situation. I just, I don't, if it really feels like they have an eight here, like almost always. Yeah, and, and Pabritz even has the ace of hearts. So, PM Mark, and really, final table, you know, a lot of, he's, both of them had decent stacks. They weren't the short stack. Uh, is PM Mark just going to be shoving with ace, ten of hearts here or something on a paired board? Almost never. So, um, it, so actually, maybe the ace of the hearts is less relevant that he's shoving the turn. Um because he he really uh, PM Mark should never be doing it. But Brits makes the call, drawing to a full house, doesn't catch it. That's a wow. knockout. Now Pabritz did not have much of a bounty, so not a whole lot of cash going into the pocket of PM Mark. But Pabritz cashes for ninety five hundred seventy dollars in total, and we are down to the final six players in this event. How many people were in this event to to start? 470 players started this event. 474, to be exact. That's entries, by the way, not necessarily players. Uh, a couple of folks at this final table are in for more than one entry. Pabritz is in for two. And Spira is actually in for three. So it was a progressive, progressive, yeah. Lukendon's been the only one really limping at the final table. And I see that. Uh, I think that's fair, relatively you know. new to the limping because I haven't really noticed that. So I don't know if, how long it's been going on for. Although it might have been going on for hours and I didn't notice. Who knows? <laughs> You're just like, oh, there's they're just, there's just two big blinds. Whatever. I've, def big I've definitely had that thought before. <laughs> I have definitely been playing and, uh, you know, I, six, ten tables, whatever it is, and I look up and I see a big blind and I just raise and then I look back and I'm like, oh, that was that was just a limp under the gun. I'm like, cool. Well, I just like min raised to a, a limp. 
It's always aces and kings, by the way. Always. My boy Crazy Carl in chat says the medium and low. Holy cow, those were a lot of players. Let's see, 4,068 players in the medium version of this event. Whoa. You were right, Crazy Carl. And how many in the low? The low had 20,474 players. They're down to the final five also. You're right, Crazy Carl. Those are some big old tournaments. It's quite exponential, or, you know, 10x what the, the high is for the medium, and then it's 5x for the, low, uh, the medium to the low. All three events down to the final. We're down to the final six in the high, final four in the medium, final five in the so, low, as we see Dav Davidoff picking so, up top pair here. Yeah, but did you see Davidoff? He ra uh, they raised pre and Swordfish defends a big blind, and Davidoff check called and now leads this turn for 30% pot. So it's it's kind of a interesting spot here for Manning. Tommy asks, "What was the buy-in for this table?" Uh, I'm not going to tell you, and it's definitely not anywhere on the screen. Thank you for your question. Pocket sevens for Krakukra, Krakukra, Krakukra. I, I always had trouble uh, pronounce. Uh, I would always m meet someone in person and find out that I've just been saying it in my head wrong for years, you know, and then I couldn't unlearn it. <laughs> Take me That's how I realize. felt about Adam Levy Levy. Levy Levy, Levi, yeah. Eugene Levi. Levy, though, in uh, Schitt's Creek or American Pie. So that's like he's, we pronounce it the same way at least. And it comes runner, runner hearts, which was totally unnecessary, given that Manic Lures are Swordfish 007 flop trip kings to begin with. See, Swordfish deserves a bo bonus here for having trips as well as a flush. <laughs> bo bonus hold them. Man, that might be the thing I miss most of all during this quarantine is no ultimate Texas hold them for me this summer. <laughs> I used to play that a long time ago, uh, like Foxwoods of all places, I don't know, years ago, um, when they first started it. Fun game. This is me. Just one more hand, babe. Just one more, just one more hand. Just one more hand. I'm gonna hit. <laughs> just one more, I'm super due, I'm due. Look, the dealer got quads. I could just as easily have had those. Just one more, just, no, it's okay. Yeah, go get a drink. Spirit of VIP, Queen 10 suited. Queen 10 of clubs. I feel like a uh, miss. If we didn't, that's, that's, I actually trademarked that hand. It's my hand. That's up. right. That's you. That's the, that's your, that's your claim to fame. <laughs> yeah. I actually like the genre bear hand better, uh, where he misreads the board, thinking that he has uh, the other player drawing dead, but I have to then tell him that. He isn't drawing dead. And then the this guy is what I'm saying. You're just one of those people that if there's like something bad that can happen, you're always in the middle of it. Like you're just what the universe loves collisions and you're always involved in them. I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's like something bad, but it's like uh, something just I have been in ra very random situations in my life that just like how why am I here? This is very hilarious, weird, bad, whatever. It's just a, a, a weird occurrence. Domination situation here as both players flop their kickers. Did you see Krakakura uh, <laughs> uh, folded a six of clubs there on the button? I did Final table that. play. Yeah, two short stacks, uh, you know, with 20... Almost, they're going to have under 20 big blinds in a minute. So he, uh, Krakakura is just practicing avoidance. 
Another blast from the past. Yeah. Invoking progress. Speaking of progressive tournaments. <laughs> Davidoff checks his eight. Will Marka check behind? Oh, his name is or Will Marka? Or no, no, no. Will or, question word. Oh, Will. Oh. The answer is no, and chunky bet here. Prime Minister Marka. <laughs> Afternoon Marka takes it down up to 14 million in chips. That is <laughs> the tip lead. Private message Marka, yeah. Spirit of VIP. I don't even know what. <laughs> Go on. I was just thinking about what, who, where is PM from? It used to be a thing. Like DM is a thing. You know, maybe there's a. Yeah. No one's like, oh, I'm going to PM you. People do Where? say PM, but it's always weird. You're right. Private message. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Netherlands is uh, where PM Marka is from. And another like flop that. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun spot. I miss going there as well. Now, I do want to ask you, Adam, we're going to take a break. Very mm -hmm. soon, so we won't get into this right now. But I want to hear about your life post Black Friday. And uh, specifically, if you ever attempted, if it's a short story, you can just tell it really, like if it's just no. If you ever attempt to, attempted to relocate, if you're ever a poker refugee. Yeah. Uh, but if, you got, if you got a story about that, we're going to get to it after the break. Sure. Yeah, I definitely gave it a shot for... At least a few years. Because I don't think I, if I knew all the details of this, I've forgotten them. But I think the audience might like to hear about your experiences. Best hand, pair of 10, Spira VIP. That's full pot. Is this a, a, what is this, Adam? What is this bet? It was, I mean, it was just a check down pot and on the river, I don't, I, there's that didn't seem like anyone had anything. Maybe they're just going for some value, trying to get a another 10, a worse than a call, maybe even a nine. Um, but so it's a full pot value bet with second pair, but there's no really, there really aren't that many bluffs. You can probably just bet kind of small with a lot of bluffs and get yeah. a lot, a fair amount. Of, well, actually maybe a nine will uh, fold to that bet. I suppose. Kakura dominated in this situation. I find myself I check, checking here with the ace five and, you know, all these players are in the one, in the one K, you know, I'm not playing that high. So I am curious what Kakura's rationale is for betting there. Yeah, just the amount. But I guess, I mean, look, yeah. if if uh, they had gotten called, that would have been a pretty sweet, pretty much max value. No, I'm talking about this hand specifically. Uh, but yeah, last hand, it would have been nice if, if uh, Sparrow had gotten called. All right, the high final table of the PKO going on break right now. And we are also going to take a short break, but it is Stream Team Sundays. So we've got a lot of options of streamers we can take a look at. Adam, have you, uh, do you ever watch anybody stream? You ever watch any of these yeah. kids? Yeah, actually, I've watched all three of them a fair amount. I haven't watched as much Xflix, but I watch Easy with Aces when uh, his first scoop, I think it was. It, it was pretty sick, actually. Watching, yeah, you know, there's a, a, lot, a lot of we don't watch a lot of X Flicks ourselves because it's in German, but we do like Lex Veldhaus. He's your man if you are just discovering Twitch poker. And we're going to check in with Lex right now and visit his stream during this break.
weekly final as well. Plus with Ace High here. Not bad, but for some protection, of course, it's going to be a value, but it's all the same. Of course, I'm a Terminator. What's up, DJ Remax? Thank you for the 27 months. Do you think it's because you get less aggressive while deep in these big MTTs? You keep getting 6 to 9. No, because I'm on a short stack on an ICM spot, so pretty clear. But that's not the reason. Um, I just got to adjust the ICM. And as you could see with the ace queen offsuit, where I four bet, fold four bet shoved, I don't get too tight at all. So when I have a big stack, I fire a lot more and play much more aggressive. Alrighty, let's check, it was a pretty big bet, yeah, they're going to show up with the king quite often when they call that, so I'm not going to go for any light value. This queen, I mean, I really don't want to bust this fucking tournament, this is the 1 and 9, it has 1.5 million guaranteed, it's insane. 200k first in a 1 and 9 tournament, registration is still open for a while, guys. Also, Sunny Million is also running, ooh, that looks like value. Sunny Million probably going to overlay, so if you're looking for some value... Get in. Get in. Okie dokie. Yeah, I think... Uh, it also was really awesome to play with uh, the experience. Honestly, it's so cool to see that I made a good fold with... Uh, uh, with uh, the Queen Ten of Hearts, it's so fun. I have the. I like that. That actually made me feel better. At first, somebody said, "Oh, you bluff like Jack Eight," and I didn't remember the river really, because the river was a complete brick. So, it's funny to see that. And uh, oh, it hurts to see these guys still play. So you know, this is the card of coverage. I had it open. It was really nice to see that I made a good fold with the Queen Ten of Hearts. Um, the other stuff too, I mean, I think I played sound, you know, what can we do? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, what can we do? I mean, I guess we can just only battle here. Oh, we got Kings of London and Sunny Million, which is fucking grand. Really good. Patty, the potato farmer, thank you for the 10 months. Yeah! Whoa! What's what? This session is a yoke. This session is a yoke. But hey, what are we gonna do? Um, it's really cool. I hope you guys are enjoying the show from uh, Stadium Series. I know there's gonna be people uh, over now looking with us. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the run on the 1k final table. I was pretty disappointed when I busted, but hey, what are you going to do about that? It is really, uh, really tough uh, to be in that spot and not finish higher. It's like you, you know, you cash for 5k and you're like, okay, and you kind of go from there. But once you get to that final table spot, having a big flip like that, um, you're, uh, you're really hoping for more, but hey... It's super interesting that now we start with the 2Ks. I really like that the Sunday event is kind of a turbo-ish event. Um, look at this. This is cool. Wait, I hope I grabbed it quick enough. This is cool. You see us for... That's me! That's me. Don't watch that person. 
But it's going to be a weird inception for people because they're going to see this later. But they, they've seen that already. Now they get that broadcasted now, and then they see this. But they were there and they seen the screen already. It's a little bit fucked up, but yeah. Um, oh. Hope you guys enjoyed that run, though. It was. Uh, it's always fun to roll deep in the fucking high rollers. I think it's very interesting, though. Because those that field was really soft. For some reason, like we had a lot of wild cards in that field. We had two people labeled as crazy. Then we had a bunch of fun players uh, that were noted fun players. But then in the end, uh, kind of like the really good players persevered. And uh, they were the ones kind of dictating the action. Except for our boy Spera. Spera something who was uh, a big stack for a lot of it. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's tough, you know, but you got to shake it off. Like when you play a session like this, you got to realize that you're playing a sick 1K, you're playing a sick 109. You know, the 530 Bounty Builder obviously is a very big tournament where Fenton is playing a big pot now. Um, the session goes on and it's very important uh, to... Uh, It's very important uh, um, to treat the next tournament as if it could be the good one, you know. Um, if you're on a downswing, if you're on a downswing, take some time off. Honestly, I think if you're on a downswing, study. Then study. All right, so we have a really good hand here, Jack. Then suit that. It was getting raised. His block bet on the river. We we'll call the Jack. Then suit it. Report back in for duty. I mean, it is really tough. It's easier said than done. Like, I feel it too, right? Like, I feel the annoyance still. But what can you do? Lex Feldhaus, handsome for a man. Welcome back, my babies, to the Poker Stars Stadium Series coverage. Today is Stream Team Sunday, which is why we are checking in with Lex for a little bit. Lex showing us, showing him showing us was a little bit weird i'm glad we're done with that it almost gave me a nosebleed i am joe stapleton he is adam levy and we are covering the final table of heat number 15 the 1050 dollars progressive knockout action back underway we are six-handed in this event and it is davidov luck with nine eight with the best hand here the eight of spades is a flush Wow, a lot just happened there. Um, I we, we come back and I actually just forgot that we were looking at whole cards and I thought they were all all in, like I thought all three of them were all in. <laughs> we we're going back to it. And I was like, oh wait. And then I also hit my uh, my wire on my phone on my uh, speaker or my headphones, so all of a sudden I'm frantically trying to get that back in. But we're good. We're back. I, Hello. I told you if there is a if there's an accident to be had, Adam <laughs> Levy will find it. I discovered something Check the other day. Flops. I am. Oh. Check Ray's Flops trying to tell me how to pronounce your name, and it's annoying me because uh, I've been friends with Adam for like 15 years. So we're just, you're banned. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your comment. <laughs> oh. All in and a call. Lakendon at risk and dominated. Oh. Nope. Does not catch the spade or the queen on the river. GG. Out of here. What? Where did his chips go? Because I, I don't think we actually saw or I mean, when we went, it looked like he had a fair amount of chips before that. And then now he had like 10 big blinds when he just went all in, maybe less. You know, we don't like to dwell on those things. <laughs> but Kenny, Fair enough. Was eliminated uh, in sixth place for a really decent score, though. A lot of head prizes for Lakendon. $18,000. The total score there. Not bad at all, considering the payouts at this point for sixth place was only 11 k And we're down to five now. Everyone now guaranteed in prize pool money to make 14000 Eight hundred thirteen dollars. 
And the next jump is another $5,000. Pocket tens. Hey, it's the river. Flush again. Aren't you're excited. It came. Love a good flush draw. Especially the ace high flush draw. You go from kind of, you know, parachuting, helping me there, you know, and then all of a sudden you, you just, you just, you just, you're not sure if you're going to make it and then you hit it and you just have the complete nuts and you're just like, ah, like I can, I can relax and now let's get paid. Yeah. And does get paid on the river value bet from Davidov Luck, who has the biggest bounty on their head and Spira with nearly 15 million in chips. Swordfish, Manny Lurzer, the short stack at the table, the favorite to go out next. That pot first Pabritz with a uh, PM Mark was uh, the biggest, probably the biggest of, of the final table. That was a huge pot. Now they're sitting pretty. Pablo Brito, Pabritz eliminated in seventh place. Adam, you know how you kind of messed up your uh, your your uh, little setup on the break. I um I misjudged how much drink I had left in my cup, and I spilled it on my shirt. And then I quickly had to put a bunch of water on it, so I'm just gonna dry it real quick. <laughs> you know, when you look in a cup and you you actually think there's less in it than you think, and then you try to throw it, and then it just goes all over your face and body. That's what I yeah, did. Yeah, it's kind of like with ice where you're trying to get those last couple pieces. Of, there's like eight cubes left and you just want like a couple and then all of a sudden it just all falls in your face. Yeah. Yeah. Except this was a mixture of Coke Zero and coffee. Wow, that's Because I a also misjudged how much coffee was left in it when I poured Coke Zero into the cup. <laughs> it's a fan. That, I'm holding a fan to dry my shirt. No big deal. Those are those are. It's an That's iconic right. fan. It's been around Stats for a long time. A They're great. Big fan. Yeah, Honeywell. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't trying to advertise Honeywell. <laughs> That's right. Other brands of fan are available. We do have top pair here for the swordfish, and gets two overs to fold. See. Davidov folded ace king here with the king of hearts, but in the other hand, they check called with ace three on like king five seven, which is back like similar kind of situation. This one, they at least had two overs. Pretty fun flop here for Davidov. Up and down, backdoor diamonds. Adam. While we have you, let's let's hear your poker refugee story. Did you attempt to leave the United States of America and go be a professional poker player in Honduras or Nicaragua or uh, something like that? I never made it to South America, but I did, hit, uh, you know, make it to Central, hitting up Mexico a little bit, um, Playa del Carmen, where it seemed like. It was a few people, a few poker refugees, and then all of a sudden there were maybe 50 to 100 that just flocked there. And I remember uh, right now, didn't you like live in Ivy's house? No. Uh, Did you have some sort of Ivy Playa del Carmen run in? I've no, I, no, but I was only there for my, the majority of my time, refugee refugeeing poker uh was in vancouver and i that was the first place i went i honestly just had a bit of apprehension about going out of out of the country i guess for it's like whenever i haven't been to a place this is me eight nine years ago whenever i haven't been hadn't been to a place i was worried to whoa that was a jack high call and it was good yeah it was right it was like, yeah uh, but yeah, so my ex girlfriend, actually, she convinced me to go. And if it wasn't for her, I would have never, I would have been just been like, ah, she you was know, like, I'm gonna, leave. I don't know what Why I'm don't doing. You actually, you know what I think would be good for you if you left the country? I think that would be good for us. 
yeah. But but no, it uh, and it was. I have I really love Vancouver. I think it's one of the best cities in North America. I even I was able to live there for six months in like 2015. Um, uh, me and Ape Styles, we got a, got a spot, and that was super fun. He's insanely good at poker. Uh, I used to think that we were, you know, equals, uh, but he even then had greatly surpassed me. And uh, he's just, you know, he's really withstood the, the test of time. And uh, I, I, I kind of just made, uh, I had a great time in Vancouver. I was very disappointed to leave. Um, I went to Europe for a bit, kind of gallivanted around uh, the, the tour stops. And um, it really, it, it's a, it was a tough kind of few years where I thought I was fine, but ultimately, no one's really going to be fine when they, you know, overnight you just get told that what you're doing for your income is now kind of just, I, I wouldn't say it was technically, it was like banned or because apparently it wasn't technically illegal, you know, but it was just like, they just kicked the, 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 the sites that were unregulated operating, you know, Right. Without any U.S. license Wait, out so of the you country. That took like a toll on you, like emotionally knowing that you were, you're told that your profession was not good enough was a, uh, I mean, was banned. It, it's not like, you know, I'm not going to say that poker being a professional poker player is, you know, like, a, a gr you know, it's, it's a definitely a, a career path if you want to take it and it's cool, but it's not like, I'm doing what you do. You do is you make money and then you can give back on your own time doing other stuff. But when you're playing poker, it's not really, you know, it's not like, you know, okay, I get it, you know, but I just had committed so much time and effort and like, like just love the poker community um, that when it happened, it really was, was kind of a, is it, uh, can I curse? Or like, uh, I just was like a mind, at, you know, it was like kind of, you know, sure, you can it, say really, mind F, that's fine. You can say letters. Yeah, it was a mind F. Uh, it threw me for a loop. And honestly, I feel like uh, it was just, I think there were a lot of people who just were so committed to poker. It was really in the mainstream 2011. Like if, if you think back and, and it was just crazy how many people. So the, for instance, the Helmuth hand, I can't tell you how many times people will just be like, oh, you're that guy or whatever. Like to this day, like poker was like, and we're talking about like even kids were watching it. Cause there wasn't, it wasn't like, weren't, weren't, it wasn't, in, there weren't all these streaming channels. It wasn't Instagram, you know, all these other social medias and stuff that you could just go on. It was like, you had ESPN. We only had three channels watch. back then, and one of them yeah, was poker. Back in my day, yeah. Um, but so, if just whatever your profession is, let's say like even esports, like you're you're playing Dota, and then then tomorrow they're just oh yeah, um, you know America has decided to ban all Dota players or like Dota for the game, and you just have to get out or uh, and. That's just a tough thing for anyone. That's how I was... felt the other day when I lost my 3 million TikTok followers. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and so I, I actually lost like 80K right off, uh, like downswing, like right away, um, maybe within six months. And then um, it was like, yeah, clearly I'm not, I'm forcing it. Whenever you would go and grind online, out of the country, I'd feel some like some sort of urgency to play, and all of a sudden, right, I'm, it's kind of like know, when you go. To, it's kind of like when you go to the casino, right? And you're like, uh, or your friends are hanging out, and you're like, oh, I'll sit down for an hour or two, and you feel that yeah. like, oh, I'm only going to get a few hands, and there's going to be a short session. I got to win it back. I'm down. I got to win it back. Uh, you know, and yeah, it's not a good mentality. So uh, I. When I finally decided, hey, I'm going to commit to this for, you know, live in Vancouver for six months, whatever. Uh, it really made me feel like it was pre-Black Friday and there were a good amount of, you know, refugees up there. A good amount of just poker players, Vancouver poker, online poker grinders, you know, and uh, that 
I think that was when I started kind of getting it, getting it back, getting my uh, bearings back. Um, but also, if you, Europeans surpassed Americans, uh, just or the world surpassed America uh, after yeah. you know a couple of years of Americans maybe not being able to play online. Um, also, I had to kind of come to grips that I was more uh, real talk. I was just kind of like not as focused on the game as maybe I should have been uh, pre Black Friday, and I think that caught up to me uh, once the you know the money kind of stopped flowing. So, you know, you kind of, but it's been, honestly, it's been uh, an interesting nine years or so. Um, but I, I feel just happy to be where I am right now. Like, I'm just like, I live in LA. I kind of just have my own thing going. Um, I can play some poker if I want. Uh, it, I also was playing, I started playing, like, I like going to play in casinos and stuff after a while, but um, I've definitely grown a ton as a person. And looking back, I was definitely, my, I mean, my ego is just very, very large and it's hard to, you know, kind of, that's just something that's a, you got, you know, it's just like a, well, look, it that's going to happen was, when you become, uh, you know, when you become very, very successful in your twenties, you tend to think that you are uh, King S of F mountain. And uh, a lot of us, our egos, how to get put back into place yes. after we grew up a little bit. Yeah, and uh, that was definitely a uh, you know uh, a reality check, but it was a necessary one. And I've got, I feel like I've uh, as as a person, I've gone through a ton of growth and ultimately like you know come to grips with the whole situation. Um, and well, yeah, we're happy I, to I, have I, you back at the Poker Stars tables, if not as a player. Yeah, no, I'm. This is this is awesome. I, I always poker stars was always like my my favorite place to play on, uh, and I mean this is a cool little background you get you got with the the monitors like you're, you're playing at a live table, and uh, I just we're like in the, the color arena, scheme. baby. Poker stars Thunderdome. Let's pick up the action here. Krakura, 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 Krakura. I tried to say it. <laughs> Krakura. Top pair. I feel like that's the Second closest. pair for Davidoff. And that is a continuation bet. I assume Davidoff is going to see at least one more card. Yeah. Well. And that one more card is a four of clubs. Now, I did want to introduce a new segment right now. It's a segment I'm going to call Judge Jody. Have you guys ever heard of Judge Judy before? It's called Judge Jody. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to present a case to you, chat. You get to be the jury. Adam, you can win if you want. Adam's going to be my bailiff. I got a, a whisper uh -oh. here on Twitch from Spenceworth that says, Can I be unbanned? I typed, here we go, when Lex was all in with eights against Krakukra with ace-queen. There was another user immediately after me that typed, by Lex, but I didn't spoil anything. Chat, you've just heard the case. I would like you to present evidence. Is this person telling the truth? Do they deserve to be let back in? Are they lying? Do they actually spoil something? Are they just trying to play me as the benevolent Judge Jody? Let us know. It's actually going to be Raksha who will be executioner. It'll be up to Raksha whether or not this person gets unbanned, if we should deem so. Sonic says no. We got, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Triple Barrel says he is a nub. Leave him. Caledonia <laughs> says yes. Check raise flop. You banned again. I'm for the, I'm for the unban. But I'm, you know, this is your, Raksha, this is your segment. Raksha is a star witness and says, was a blatant spoil. And that is why I chopped his head off. It's going to take a lot, a lot of hard evidence for me to overrule Raksha. And that's why I brought this up because that story sounded, it sounded good. 
It sounded believable, and I almost unbanned them. But I didn't, because I don't want to undermine Raksha, and I take Raksha's word for it, so I'm going to need more evidence. I have a lot of people right now that are on Spenceworth's sides that want Spenceworth to get unbanned. Oh, should we go back and rewatch the video evidence? Ooh. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put it to a vote. Put ones in the chat if you want an unban. Two if you want to keep the ban. But Raksha's vote counts for a hundred. She gets a hundred votes. Pick up the action here. We'll see what happens. We got some real hands for once. PM Marka raising the button. Queen ten. Krakukra. Ace king in the small. Expect Safe to, to say it's going up. Here. Yep. Yeah. Or re-raise if you really want to throw it back. Remember, remember saying re-raise? <laughs> I'm raising your raise. And I should expect a quick little fold, yeah. So what's the ruling? The ruling? Your band stands. If you want to do something really nice for Raksha and maybe win her over, you're all for it. But Judge wow. Jody upholds the ruling on the field. Harsh but fair. We are still five-handed in heat number 15, the $1,050 progressive knockout. Everybody now guaranteed. 14000 Eight hundred thirteen dollars. We've got ace on ace action. The domination of nations possibly, possibly can be overcome by the swordfish, who is actually the favorite. Not that much anymore. Was a bigger favorite on the flop. Double paired board now, so they're in Chopsville at the moment. I mean, I think, yeah, Mark is just going to, Mark A, he's just, they're just going to keep checking it down. And uh, yeah, this is, yeah. Check, check, chop it up. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves a chop pot. James gets mad if I don't sing it. That's like that Spider-Man meme where they just kind of go like, you, you, and it's, yeah, like, I, I got an ace, I got an ace. Like, I'm, of course, that's, the, that's why it, it, it looks like we have an ace, because we both have an ace. That's like that Vanessa Selps, Kevin McPhee hand from the EPT where they get really mad at each other for getting it in like two sixes versus ace eight, and they're both like, hmm. Oh, I, w I was actually there when that hand happened, and I, I, it was, it was an amazing. It's an amazing hand. I think I actually tweeted it a few months ago, just saying that this hand is so underrated that uh, there's there's definitely some. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty tense. After Swordfish that. all uh, in and at risk up against right. kings. Gonna need to hit an ace on the river. No, nope. no ace from space. Swordfish sent back into the sea. $21,352 in total. That's including bounties and the advertised payout of $14,813. Everyone guaranteed just about $20,000 now. Getting up With, there. We are getting up there. We're down to the final four. The bounties are getting larger too. Yeah, good call, buddy. Smallest bounty now worth $2,000. Top pair, top kicker for Post Malone Marka. Ooh. Unexpected. 
check raise for a 4x on the flop. We'll see how hard Spirit VIP decides to go here because Mark is Mark is not folding, and I kind of expect a check here. Yeah. The check raise that that's a, that's a new thing that uh, you see a lot more these days than maybe four years ago or so. What happened four years Joe, ago? Are, are, well, uh, I feel uh, peel solver, you know, came into or uh, whatever. Right. You know, it, it kind of. Are I, you a I check raiser? A, am I a check raiser? Yeah. I only check raise um, semi bluffs. I'm a big semi bluff check raiser. Pretty obvious. I like to play my hands face up mostly. Pocket sevens here against Ace Jack of Hearts. I invested in a solver um, to help get me through this series, Adam. <laughs> this thing here, if I have a hard time knowing what the right decision is, I just plug the information into the solver. Like I'm gonna you should do get one of those magic out. eight balls. You shake them up. I thought about the magic eight ball, but I didn't know what to do with things like outlook. Not so good. I'm not sure what that means. Mm. Should I bluff? Should I? You know, uh, Ace Jack does manage to outflop the pocket sevens, but sevens have all kinds of ways to win this. Nearly forty percent. Not likely I'd to be know. Three betting. All right, what is yeah. that good? What about your three betting? I was just thinking, you know, based on the stack size, I might just start three betting with Ace Jack of Hearts here uh, because Mark has got such a he's two X on second. You know, that's a massive stack. So let's put the pressure on everyone and including the second, especially the second place stack. Uh, obviously calling totally fine. Uh, and I mean, Ace Jack of Hearts is Great hand to call with. And Marka takes that one down, gets the sevens to fold. Yeah. But with this sta these stacks and the fact that it's a progressive as well, let's bump it up. Let's get aggressive. Haven't seen too much unbridled aggression in this tournament. Hashtag crazy fun fact. All the tournaments, all of the Stadium Series event number 15 tournaments, the low, the medium, and the high, they're all four-handed right now. Pretty weird. There you go. How about you get take two of these jack of hearts? They all started the exact same time, too. That is quite random. Like, one is 20,000 players, others of 5K, 4K, and... The folks who put together these uh, tournaments and series and structure them are just absolute wizards, right? It's just like, it's like the same kind of math they use to slingshot the space shuttle to the moon. It's just all calculations just and Zach Galifianakis, the you know the the hangover meme where yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like over at Poker Stars HQ. They're trying to figure out how to get all these tournaments to end at the same time. Well done, gang. Ace Jack again. Yeah. It's not an easy feat. Of course, this is going to take a while, I would say. The, the shortest stack has 34 big blinds. Uh, actually, I guess it's going up to 250k big soon or next minute. But still, that that's... Slight like 27 big blinds, and then Mark has uh, 90 big blinds after the blinds go up. And uh, yeah, it's good. We, we, we might have to get comfortable. Strap in, gang. You know, Adam, to answer your question from before, I have uh, I have started working a top pair check raise 
into my game. I think that it's funny because I heard now like it's actually the good poker players are doing this. I'm like, people don't really check raise top pair enough anymore. So I've started uh, occasionally doing that. Um, wow. To answer your question from before. Yeah, uh, it's check raising top pair is tricky. Um, you do it with certain ones and all of a sudden you're just running into a better top pair. Or, and then sometimes you're getting people to just float you with ace high and then you just bet the turn and they'd pick up a draw and then you have to, it gets complicated, no doubt. Yeah. I think specifically against the types of players I'm playing against, it's going to be more profitable than playing against the best people in the world. I don't get myself into that many bad situations because I'm playing in home games where, you know, people aren't really going to make, aren't really going to punish me for doing that very often. I, people play. Pretty I pretty actually poorly. find, I actually find it can be kind of tough to play against some of those players when you're check raising because they will do certain things. You're like, I really wanted to bluff here. With this hand, I expect you to call after I check raise, like the queen five spot or a 10 4 4. He's like a queen five of spades. And they just decide to re raise all in. You're like, ah, like. See, I don't face that a lot, but I do. People are just realizing their full equity against me on every single hand because they just never fold. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> that's fair. So, like, my 70 30s, you know, I'm losing them the full 30% of the time because they're never folding. That's what poker is, realizing your equity. So just, you know, they just call and call and call some more. Two overs and a gut shot for Davidov. About as big a brick as you can get for Krakukra. So that's a pretty great last, a uh, pretty great screen name. I like the name, just kind of Krakukra. Plus, no underscores or numbers, right? Those are the pure names. Just one yeah. word. That was a, a great tell uh, of a, uh, I guess as Lex would say, a fun player back in the day. If it was just like a bunch of underscore uh, numbers and letters and a couple underscores and a stock avatar. Oh, um, like a like a. A chart? No, or there like were, um, yeah, there were there are ten stock photos you could choose on Poker Stars that were like you know a gra a field or something, you know, just random stuff like trees. Trips here for Davidov. D Hart writes in to say, "Much better today, Joe. Love the commentary. Much better than what." Hi, Adam and Joe. Huge fan of both. It's the first part of what you said feels like a backhanded compliment. I'm really, really tempted to ban you just for that. Well, the second but, part was really nice. Oh. I'm going to try to let it. You know why? Because Adam Levy always puts me in a good mood. So I'm going to let it slide. Oh, Joe, that was, that was uh... a... <laughs> Not today. Stapes has a heart. Crazy. Um, so Spirit is going for this. Double barrel with no equity. And I would expect to give up. Yeah. Really, really um, unfortunate whenever you try to rep your opponent's nutted hands. Yeah, it's hard to rep. River. It's hard to rep a hand when they have that hand. Davidov is in a limper. From the small blind. Always a yeah, trick, I just feel but... like you always regret not raising this, but obviously some of the time it's going to pay off to limp your really big hand, small to big. For what it's worth, I, the three times that I've seen David off raise, it was ace three, ace queen, ace king in the small blind. So.
and Sicket asking questions about the free roll, which I'm going to let slide because there is information on the free roll coming up. We're actually going to see some of the free roll final table. Krakukra. Krakukra. I think that's what we've settled on. Krakukra and Krakukra. I dig it. Right in the Krakukra. I always want to know what a lot of these words mean in whatever language it is. I feel like that's Eastern European of some sort. Well, we did have a lot of folks weigh in to let us know that Lakende, Lakenda, uh, meant legend in Swedish, and I think someone else chimed in to say Dutch, maybe. Pocket sevens against Queen Jack. King, King, Trey, bit of an action killing flop. Spire's been the most aggressive player at uh, of these four, so... That's super assume, small. Yeah. The whole, why? Then under min bet. Oh, no. Sorry. Hello. Full house in the turn. The in one minute going to 250K is trolling me because I feel like five minutes ago I was like, oh, it's it's, it's going up in, in one minute. So I was like, wait, how are they betting under the big blind? a good turn yeah it's a little confusing sometimes to look up there you think those are the current blinds but those are the next blinds pm market checking hoping to elicit a bet hoping that maybe running diamonds improved spira's hand spira has a show downable hand but chooses to bluff around a third of the pot i like this bet by spira uh They really have a ton of aces in their range, but it's not going to work. Definitely not. PM Marka only afraid of three aces. This reminds me of uh, rounders, where it's like uh, all I'm thinking about is three stacks of high society. You know, just <laughs> just uh, like what am I going to do? I don't know, but I'm just or thinking about the the effing mirage. There you go. The Mirage, that's right. You know. Adam kind of smashing together a little mashup of rounders quotes. That's the fold from Spirit VIP. PM Marka is still way out in front in that event. But we do want to give a little bit of a sweat. Just a little bit of a check-in with the free roll final table. The winner of this event gets a $5,200 ticket to the Stadium Series oh. Grand Final. Look at that run out. Broadway. You, you, missed, the, you missed the name Quumta. Q-W-U-M-T-A. Quumta. Nice. Quumta is a quality name. Good luck. Says Akashi. Wow, that was an insta-shove from Nerad. Here we go. Seven are out in front. We've got a wheel draw. Oh. That's a wheel in the turn. Double up. Another all in. who just jams again. Wow, okay. This could be it. Ah, that's definitely it. <laughs> it's over. Uh, yeah, it's over. GG. So congratulations to Kanerad29, winner of the free roll. Whoa. Five thousand two hundred dollar ticket to the freeze out grand final. Is the grand final a freeze out? It is. Oh, that's it's awesome. It's not called the freeze out final, but it is a freeze out. $5,200 in a free roll. And James Hardy, welcome confirm, back, my friend. Not only is it a freeze out, Joseph, but it also has a guarantee of $5 million. And that player has just free rolled their way in and has won a $5,200 ticket. A reminder, we are going to run a similar free roll next Sunday. Hopefully it'll run a little bit smoother. 
than this week's. Teething problems out the way, but crucially, we paid those people their money just to keep the rounders thing going, Adam. And that winner is going to be <laughs> going through to the grand final on Sunday, the 2nd of August. Meanwhile, four players remain at this final table of the 1K Progressive Knockout event. Um, I don't know whether you told Adam what happened at the start of the day, Joe, but something that informs no. how relatively deep they are right now, and I guess how things have slowed down during the late stages of this final table, is they came back with 45 players, and in the first seven minutes of play today, we had 16 eliminations. Wow. Yeah. So Progressive clearly there sometimes. was there <laughs> was some consolidation in the stacks, shall we say? Uh, but right now, this is a case where, and again, Joe, I'm getting flashbacks to last night. We got one player with all the chips, and everyone else bunched up. Yeah, Mark has just been. Crushing it since the Pebrice hand, uh, where Pebrice had ace jack on jack eight eight, and Marque had nine eight suited, and they just got it all in on the turn. I feel like Pebrice kind of knew that he was beat, but you know he had there were so many ships in the middle at that point that it was tough for him to pull. Now extending that chip lead. Pierre Marker playing 26.6 million. The second biggest stack is Davidov Luck, who's got 7.9 million. And Davidov with the biggest bounty up for grabs here, 6,640. But it's Krakukra and Spirit VIP going to the flop. Uh, great to have top pair. You'd rather not be... Oh, two pair now. I think Kirkuka should just keep checking, trying to get to a river, but I, I'm not even sure sh uh, Kirkuka should call. Probably oh, maybe that's cool. Yeah. And no one likes the fact there are four spades out there. Queen versus nine eight. I'd assume it's going up. I would, yeah, that's exactly what I would do. I would want to go all in uh, based on the other two shorter, shorter stacks. Just take the chips, move on. Hope you didn't get, don't get called, and then pray to win. <laughs> Wow. Nothing better than having all the chips and picking up premiums shorthanded. <laughs> Raise Fun and times. take it. Making it look so easy. This is a dream spot for PM. Do you, would you say it's Mark or Marka? I'd say Marka because of the E at the end, right? Marka. It feels weird. Yeah. Not to pronounce it. I can't believe that it would ever be a soft sound. Yeah. I was hedging earlier on, Adam, and just calling the player PM. I figured that that bit <laughs> I can get right. That bit I'm not going to screw up. <laughs> Hold on a second. UK, France. Maybe they just are big fans of the Prime Meridian. Maybe they oh. live in Burkina Faso. What's the most unique Marian country that you've seen at a final table? You know, oh. there's there's Madagascar. I think I saw playing once. Not a final table. You know, there's like Ephraim or uh, Phyram. I think F Y dot like their initials. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, we got an all in. Yeah, we have Ace Jack against Ace King. And that is Davidov Luck eliminated in fourth place. Cash is for $32,500 when you combine the bounties and the payouts. And P 
PM marker now up to 35.6 million as we say goodbye to Joe for the time being. A uh, few people in chat speculating or claiming to know the real identity of our chip leader right now. It's not that I don't doubt you. Actually, I do. But we can't take <laughs> that information from unverified sources. You may well be correct. That may well be a fact. But until I have that verified by official PokerStar sources and also permission that that player is happy to be linked to that screen name, we're not going to speculate on the stream. That's definitely very different from, I mean, there, were, there was never any kind of protocol back in the day for, you know, whether someone actually even wanted to be known or not. It was, you know, I think that's this person. Yeah. And, you know, just, it was just all hearsay. There was an allure to figuring out who someone was, I guess. And it's weird. There's still a few players who are still better known by their screen name than they are by their real name. Isildur. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, there's... Well, that was one of those where for a few years, it was like the worst mystery in poker. Who is this enigmatic guy yeah. who's crushing high stakes? Who is Isildur? Uh, we're pretty sure it's Victor Blom. No, but who is Isildur? One? Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's Victor Blom. No, no, but who is this mystery man? And then they did the big reveal at the PCA that year. Everyone, Isildur one is Victor Blom. Really? You don't say. <laughs> Marka in such a commanding position right now. Biggest bounty, just raising close to. Uh, I'm curious what what hand Marka won't raise. Is it's that yeah. good of a situation? I would think that Spira has obviously most aces here, so Marka can't really try to represent it. But you really just want to be, oh, interesting. This is definitely a spot where I would admittedly check just because I have king high. Uh, but you can't really call a bet with it either, so it's kind of tough to win the pot, I guess, against an aggressive player. Nine on the button opens to 550. Big blind defend and two pair versus bottom pair. Why is it that the way PM Mark is running, I just feel the jacks coming at him? <laughs> or somehow Mark is going to find a PM Mark is going to find a way to win the pot like this ace good card to try to get him off a queen or a king it's always nice when you have nine percent flashing uh as your possibility of winning the pot and then you just get a fold but i, I don't think this is a spot where spirit can fold no I'm glad, by the way, that you did the same thing that I keep doing, which is thinking they're all in because you see the cards on their backs, because you see the percentages. <laughs> You're thinking, oh, they're all in. The novelty of being able to stream online poker cards up on a short delay, it's, it's still new. It's still surprising every time I look back at the screen. Yeah. Why are the cards not moving? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, was, I, I like that check. I think that Spirit has played a aggressive. He Spirit has shown the ability to be probably the most aggressive at the table until Marka got this massive stack, and that I don't think that person's going to fold. Uh, 
they might even call with King Jack in that spot. I don't necessarily, yeah. it's possible that there might be a spot where, all right, I'm, it's, it's time for me to take a stand kind of thing. And King Nine not folding either. Here we go. All in, Ace Queen against Sixes. Got shot. But doesn't hit on the river. That's another KO. Prakukra, Konstantin Maslak eliminated in third place for just shy of $33,000 in total prize money. And we are heads up in this 1K PKO. And it's PM Marker with a 3 to 1 chip advantage. And now, with a dominating hand, A6 versus Jack 6. Have you ever, you know, watched any League of Legends or, uh, you know, just Dota where in the, just like on Twitch, because there is, after you have kills in a row, like you, you, you kill a hero, boom, boom, boom. It goes like unstoppable, immortal. Like it just yeah. keeps like these different, and that's how I feel Mark, every all in that PM Marka wins. It's like, he's unstoppable. Well, here is a hashtag fun fact for you. Right now, the low, medium, and high versions of this tournament are all heads up. Before, it was all four-handed. So that's yeah. really impressive. It's just so weird that they've been structured in such a way that they are literally running at the same pace. As Joe is saying, the people who make the structure seem to know what they're doing. And I, this has to be case in point right here. You know, different yeah. buying levels, different structures. They all seem to end up at the same time. And that's kind of what you want. And just this is big stack bullying. But look, Spirit VIP playing back with the gut shot. Going to take down the pot. That feels like the holy grail of of chip structures, you know, the the for the structure team. It's it's yeah. I mean, what what are we now like? Almost twenty years into the existence of Poker Stars, you kind of figured they've had a lot of time to figure it out. But then you're always making adjustments. You're always learning. You know, Sam Grafton's yeah. a member of our commentary team, and he talked about the fact that you know a key adjustment that had to be made with this format is when PKOs first arrived, when the format first started gaining popularity there was still a discrepancy between second and first place money in the payouts which just meant the gap between second and first was ridiculous and now we have a situation where you look in the lobby and second and first pay the same because everyone now understands that when you knock out your opponent take their bounty and keep your own head prize at the end of the tournament that's where you have that separation that's where you have the difference that's a that's a really good point. I do remember, you know, winning a PSKO a few years ago, and all of a sudden, I'm, I I didn't even realize the first time I won that I would get my own bounty. Like I didn't I didn't yeah. just think about it. I was like, all right, you know, maybe I'll get their bounty, and then uh, like so you're basically winning maybe more than two x what second does, maybe two point five yeah. sometimes. There's always stuff changing behind the scenes, right? You're always tweaking stuff, trying out new stuff. And inevitably, you know, what do they say about best laid plans? As we see Spirit VIP win the last hand of the level. You know, you can structure the perfect poker tournament and it still could be like over in two hours because you just can't necessarily plan for what the deck's going to be and how players are actually going to react to the cards they're dealt, right? It's that how long's a piece of string analogy which we keep dragging out. I, I actually had a, a funny little example of that where I decided to throw some poker tournaments for like my friends, you know, at, at my house and 20 people in it, you know, 15 minute levels, but they're all amateurs. Yeah. They I'm teaching them what poker is at this time and they don't know to be aggressive. It ends up taking four hours or something for 20 people to finish because they're just playing at a different pace than maybe uh, the high stakes players are playing, so yeah. it's kind of funny it's how it works. It was so often, especially when you structure a live event and you're dealing with amateurs, and you know the most TDs know that okay, if there's only 20 big blinds in play, it's going to end at that level. But it's like 
No, these guys will literally raise fold off a three big blind stack. So just be prepared for that to happen. Um, now, obviously, I appreciate you're kind of like new to the party, Adam. So I just wanted to bring you up to speed a little bit with the format of the stadium series, because clearly this is something a little bit special that Stars is laying on for the summer months. It's not part of our normal family of online series. Clearly, the format that Scoop created all those years ago, the medium, low, the high buy-ins, it has that. But there's this progression system where the buy-ins are going up week on week. So we're about to enter week three. Oh. So everything's about to be a $22 low, a $215 medium, and a 2100 high. When we get into the final week, it'll be 55 530 and 5200 But one of the things I really like about this is that rather than talking about guarantees, we talk about the added value. There's so many tickets being given away to events. You heard us talk about the free roll. You saw that winning moment from that free roll. But the whole idea of calling these games heats is that the players in the medium and the low events, even though they're standalone MTTs with their own prize pools and their own guarantees, the top finishers are also getting tickets to play in that weekend's final. So if they also act as qualifiers for the weekly freeze-out events with the big guarantees with the big prize pools at the end of every week. So there's that kind of fun idea that you're giving low stakes players the chance to ladder up, medium stakes players the chance to ladder up. And if you make the final table of any of the weekly finals, including the $5.50 or the $11, you get a 5K ticket to the high buying grand final at the end of the series. You know, 2 million in added tickets, I think is something that the poker community can really get behind. That is that's sick. I, I, I love that the format. I love that it slowly progresses. And I mean, yeah, you're you're just playing a five dollar on a Sunday, you know, just yeah. casually. And then all of a sudden you even final table a turbo. You win it. And then you're just in there. You qualify for the heat. That's really cool. You know, I, I, I like that. Yeah. It's just I always like seeing feel good stories. Like it just some random person casually playing. <laughs> We just need one of them to make it to the final table. We just need one of them to get a really big cash. But of course, from the, the pros' perspective, it's pretty awesome as well, right? Because they're looking and thinking, so this 5K event you're running on August 2nd, that's going to have like loads of people who've just like qualified from like $5 and $11 MTTs. Okay, that, that might be a 5K I want to play. Yeah, no, that's uh, you're you're enticing me. No, I'm I'm kidding, but yeah, it's <laughs> I'm not I'm not allowed to play. In, I'm not allowed to leave the country at the moment. No, I'm kidding, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, this this definitely sounds like a, like a lot of fun. Um, being, it's rare. I remember I played the 25k uh, at the in Bahamas. Uh, the, oh, the, the PSPC, yeah. yeah, yeah, the PSPC, and it was kind of a perfect tournament. You know, you're, there's the pros, you get some of the, the, the best players in the world playing it, but then you get someone who just won it from a free roll. Someone was just gifted it for, remember, I remember watching D, David Peters. Of course, it was David Peters winning the, you know, he won <laughs> yeah, the, right. that was just hilarious. Like one this of the first packages given. Tombola. I mean, not only yeah. was it a random draw, but it was a, it was a tombola for heaven's sake. He's like at oh, the man. final table of the EPT in Monte Carlo, oh, I think, and he just wins it as well. Like it, it was too good, but the fact that it was in a tombola, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but, you know, I, I can, you know, context you can, clues. You can picture but, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, the fact that, that that's, that's great, and, and that's kind of what I love. I mean, I appreciate, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Those fairy tale stories that give, you know, hard-up players like David Peters the chance to compete at the highest <laughs> possible level. Uh, so here we go. Action underway again. We are back from the break. Still the big chip advantage for PM Marker. And we're still at the 125 250 blind level. I think we're going to see some pretty aggressive play. Pretty sick play from these two. They're going to go for it. Spirit wants the title. I mean, obviously they both want it. But Spirit is going to battle. Obviously, I know a lot has changed in 2020. The year has not gone the way that any of us thought it would, and we've all had to like change our plans and make major life adjustments. But I know you're not playing as much poker as you used to, Adam. Had 2020 gone to plan, do you think you would have come to Barcelona for the second PSPC? Um, maybe not Barcelona, just because I've been trying to focus uh, on like other things besides poker. Like I became like an event. I was through, I had an events company that was uh, it was super fun, 
Um, but would I have been flying out of the country to maybe play, you know, W Coop or Scoop? Yeah, I, 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 right. I even I think since Black Friday, I have maybe missed like four or five coops. Maybe it was the very first one to miss that. And then like after that, I'd still somehow find a, a reason to just go outside and play online, you know, outside of America and play online uh, during, you know, one of the series. It's just, I, I just really, I've always liked Poker Stars more. I said that earlier, but uh, I just always have, I mean, maybe I just have like a, an attachment, a uh, nostalgia factor to just W coops and scoops. So, well, we yeah, see I, Spirit of IP get there on the river and facing a bet of 822,000. There's the race. I'm guessing. I think this, this is, is one of those spots where it's just a fold. It's. Yeah. He, even though Spirit is pretty aggressive, what. Yeah, these are. It, it's kind of I didn't we didn't I didn't actually see like all the action, but I assume that it was maybe like one bet, then a check on the turn or something, and then a raise on the river. Like, no, it's just not a line that's going to be bluffed in it that often, and you're not going you shouldn't be calling with like mid pair there to 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 look them up. Well, here's a setup: well, Ace hand. King versus Sevens. Marker but raises the button. Pretty deep. Fifty yeah, big ones. Just a call. Yeah. Just a call, but. Interesting flop here. Ace, king of clubs with the royal flush draw. And look at the percentages. Pierre Marker has the best hand right now with a pair of sevens, but is a statistical underdog. Nearly two to one, yeah. All right. And we sometimes, did have a situation. Go ahead. Carry on, Adam. I was going to say on. sometimes... Uh, uh, the ace king in that spot decides to check, and then uh, you know, Marka actually sees the turn to board pairs on the turn. Maybe Marka somehow gets to the river and wins, but it's it's going to be a tough tough go for sevens on that board most of the time. No, we had a situation where PM had three to one chip advantage. Now it doesn't even have a two to one advantage. Yeah, it's never you know. You always want it to be the the dream scenario where, because remember, PM's just busting everyone, knocking most of the players out, and then just immediately wins, and then boom, snap, it's over. But usually, it's uh, it's never it's never you're never that lucky. I mean, rarely. To quote a man who went by the name Big Toro, it's never easy in poker. And this uh, gets checked to showdown. Ace high is good. Question. Have you seen, uh, have you uh, done commentary for any Final Table Live or online where there were three or three handed and it ended uh, on the same hand? Not three handed, but I have done that four handed. Joe and I were in Montreal six years ago for an event called the Canada Cup. And they had been playing like five handed for an absolute eternity and then finally a player goes out in fifth place and you're like okay finally but still felt like there was a long way to go and then suddenly from nowhere comes this four-way all-in where the guy with kings who's got the rest of the table covered suddenly sees king's hold and wins it and that was that was absurd it's a crazy hand and there are at least there's at least one player if not two had no business no business being in that part you know icm and all that jazz um but yeah that was that was a fantastic hand and i'm sure many of you have seen it it's done the rounds on on, on, on social media but someone will correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think i've ever seen a three-way all-in three-handed which meant that you didn't have a heads-up battle I don't think I've ever won it, but I've definitely been a part of them where it just feels like all of a sudden you're, you're you, you, yeah, like you said, goes from four to three and then boom, you're ready to, you know, try to make things happen. And then all of a sudden yeah. it's just over. <laughs> it's a weird <laughs> feeling. 
but I mean, you, you kind of, you know, not, it's not, it's not a one-up, but you, you like exceeded expectations with the question. You were like, know, no, right? not a three-handed, <laughs> a four-handed. That seems, it, it, that, that yeah. actually seems impossible. Amazing. I, I've never seen the hand, but I definitely need to check it out. Yes. Yes. I believe Robert Notkin was the name of the gentleman with Kings who uh, won the 2014 Canada Cup. Awesome. It was a really fun event, great venue, and I absolutely fell in love with Montreal as a city. I've never been able to go back there, but would love to. I uh, went, uh, I think, W Coop in 2018. I decided to go there for three weeks. I've rented an Airbnb. It was 90 degrees in September um, in Montreal, which was, there was no air, air conditioning. Did not expect that, but it was, wow, this this I know, is, right? Uh, I kind of figured it was a case of value bet the jack on the river, fours with the decision whether to hero. I did not expect Spear of VIP to turn this small pair into a bluff and raise to 2.75 million. I, I, I think Mark is going to call. This is the second time that he's done this exact, or, well, no. okay, maybe not. Fault it. Well, not, well played. You know, just aggression. We'll just win some pots sometimes. So Unexpected. closing the gap between them. Uh, so yes, Adam, yeah. you were talking about Montreal. Yeah, it was 90 degrees and uh, didn't expect that I would need AC with my Airbnb. But uh, I was in the heart of town, like Rue Saint Laurent, I think. My uh, Airbnb was overlooking some nice like one-way street just right near a park. Uh, it was just, it was, I don't know, I, yeah. I, uh, Montreal during the summer for me is just awesome. I've been there maybe a few t uh, briefly in the winter, but that was just an, an unexpectedly amazing trip during the summer. I didn't do well in WQ, but that's okay. But yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. You can't win them all. Okay. It was to the point where I could. Uh, there you go. Some aggression from yeah. PM, bringing it back. Trying to regain momentum and back up to nearly 30 million chips. Nine, eight against seven, five. All hearts. It is funny when you see the whole cards and uh, at least when I was watching like the replays for like the warm up or a million and yeah. you would see all the cards, you, you realize that a lot of people get the same hand more than you think, more than you realize. And a lot of times it doesn't get shown down. So we have a pair of fives for PM. And it's similar technology that's bringing us this, Adam. What we're effectively seeing is a reconstruction, a replay of the hands that were played. And it's important to stress once again that the hand histories that build these replays are not exported from the server until they hit that delay and this is the ultimate safeguard that hand history is not exported until the hand is completed until the pot is awarded there is no way that anyone anyone is able to view whole cards in a live hand i i appreciate that uh that that actually reminds me of when i was watching fintan's uh final table and he had this bluff uh, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a bluff that the time banks were so deep at that point. Maybe it was three handed where he he had yep. four high, you know, and the guy tanked for four minutes. I, I believe that. And he also was saying that it was legitimately just tanking time to use the, the, the bank. And he was like, if it lasts seven more seconds or something, I'm going to have to end the stream. It was that close. Wow. And wow. Um, it didn't. The guy folded and then Fintan went on to win that tournament. But it was such a kind of a riveting hand to see. But it, it's really important to just have the, you know, the, the trust and security yeah. of that. Yeah. So we've got Ace King against King Deuce here. And Mark uh, very much controlling proceedings here and now up to 32 and a half million. And just to kind of speak to that, Adam, we are in a situation where it would be highly unlikely, hugely improbable. But let's just say, for example, you get five players who all decide they're going to min-raise 
and use all of their time bank through multiple streets just to see what would happen if they caught up with the 20-minute delay. The reality is this would freeze. You wouldn't see anything because, again, the hand will not export until it's over. That's something I would never even think about, but I'm sure that, you know, that's what the security team, that's what they're paid for to, to do and think about all the you know, well, possibilities. We're, we're, we're all aware of some of the things that have happened in the past in online poker. And I think it's so important that you make it clear that God mode is not a thing, that no one in the security team, none of the support staff, no one can see whole cards in real time. It's only after a hand's completed that that information becomes available to anyone yeah completely agree so ace king against six five the open-ended straight draw and spirit calls and makes the straight on the turn note that spirit didn't check raise here um <clears throat> but does lead because uh, this you know i i think it could be uh spirit is definitely playing great you know i think this is a a thing that that happens a lot more than it used to where you have a card that maybe is better for your range than their range so they lead but i also find sometimes people are just like you know we'll do that and maybe they don't do that all the time but you know they'll have the nuts and be like all right oh wow this is a brutal river though for pm so regarding payouts guys we talked about this earlier on effectively it's the same both get $41,000 from the prize pool. But remember, what really they're playing for is that final head prize. The Spirit wins that pot and is up to nearly $20 million now. It's all about Nothing the head prize in a progressive knockout. And the winner will obviously take the bounty of their opponent, plus they'll get all of it, right? Because they get to keep their own head prize as well. That also makes it so that there's no chops at, the, at yeah. the end really which is you know nice for the viewers although people have always had this this weird kind of uh fascination with seeing a chop yeah. you know they're the the chat is always at least back in the day there people would just be like come on you guys gonna chop you gonna chop even live i've been in uh some weird situations where like uh, three-handed there are two people who want to chop and i don't want to chop and then like the rail is getting aggressive towards me because i mean this is like happens at like you know happen at the bike <laughs> casino in la and they're like come on this guy won't chop like what are you doing man there's my and i i was like this is actually getting to be like a you know like they're they're the rail is hating me so much that like i'm like i don't know these people this there's money on the line like this is just kind of a weird situation, but ultimately I didn't and, you know, still got second, but what are you going to do? But it's just, it's just funny how people react to chops. Yeah. Normally it's uh, people like me who play like $5, $10 events, and then they're watching like a 5K EPT where they realize that the difference between first and second is 500 grand and they want to kind of even out the variance. It's like, what if I was in this situation, I wouldn't chop. It's like, it's more money than you'll ever play for in your life. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, I uh, actually thought I like PMR... Is, Go ahead. I was just Sorry. going to quickly say, Adam, that what I do like is both online and live at Stars Events, the fact that you do still play it out even if you chop because you still have to set aside an amount of money to play for. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a good innovation of because it just feels weird when you've put so much time into getting to the a winner and then you just kind of deflate it, you know, like oh, this guy doesn't care anymore. And just like we're going to go yeah. all in blind and the tournament's over. Like what, you know, because like what's the point to an extent? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like PM's check raise here. Uh, I think Spear is clearly going to be seed betting very wide based on his aggression, based on the fact they're heads up and it's hard to have an ace. And um, just felt like a good time for PM to use some calculated aggression. So still the chip advantage to PM marker. 29 million roughly playing 
18 million. Could possibly see a check raise here, check call, but you know, spirit checks back, so it'll probably just go check fold, check bet fold. There's the fold. PM has played a very solid game. Obviously, PM has been running very well, uh, but overall, just solid. Hey, you know, flop trips, first top pair, double up, showed aggression when it, it, uh, PM had an overwhelming chip stack, and it's just been, uh, you know, pretty easy ride for. Mark at once, you know, I think uh, once that hand happened versus Pappard's. Well, this just gets better and better for Spirit VIP, but I'm not sure how we see PM Marker put any more chips in the pot. Sure enough, checks the turn. And is this a case of going for value or letting your opponent try and bluff at this? I think you have to bet just because, like, yeah, that's a big bet. Uh, kings may check the turn. Queens, jacks, granted, you have jacks, I mean, granted, we're heads up. But there there are some hairs. Maybe the, the, the dude decides to look up, look it up, look up with nines, eights, uh, maybe even ace high sometimes. I don't know. But... Uh, I don't. I think once the the turn check happens, PM's kind of like I'm done with the hand most of the time. Yeah, well, maybe a small value bet, but just gonna fold to a check raise. Queens and sevens versus king high. Spirit picking up their fair share of hands and connecting with their fair amount of flops right now. And we got ace right. king versus ace deuce. I think this is the first time we've seen two 20 million stacks uh, since heads up has started. So it's getting closer. How oh, awesome to raise the button with ace king and then get three back to two million. This is at least the third time I've seen uh, PM have. Ace King, heads up. How are you feeling about Ace Deuce now? Don't get sticky. <laughs> now is not the time to start messing around with your five bets. Wow. Spear is really thinking about this one. Okay. Let's okay. it go. Most of me is like, please fold. But then some of me is like, mm, maybe, maybe don't. Let's see. You know, it's going to be fun. See what happens. Nice to see Joe Stapleton's bearded visage reappear on our screens. Hello, my heads up, babies. We are indeed heads up, Joe, and it's PM Marco with the chip advantage right now. Spirit VIP betting this King 5-4 flop with a pair of fives gets the call from PM. One point two million on the turn. I like the sizing there. You, you know, this is. You don't have the. I mean, you might get called by some other 
worse fives, maybe a four here and there. Some other plus draws and just get to check back the river. Oh, look at and this domination. This could be it. <laughs> Spirit <laughs> VIP. <laughs> With pocket sixes in the bag. Calls. Wow, you say this could be it, Joe. Look at that. Oh board. my goodness. A set of you, sixes you're... against two pair. Well, a set of sixes are ahead and uh, not covered. <laughs> oh boy, this is going to be tough for PM to get away from this. Yikes. Jeepers. And based on the aggression, we might even see a... Oh, we're probably not going to see a click back. Three, uh, uh, three bet on the flop. Yeah. No, but Definitely no folding unless maybe a three of clubs rolls off. I don't know how you have the discipline to not put in another bet on that flop. I mean, it's going to yeah. chase away a lot of hands, right? So it's not... It's, it works out in this case and it works out in other cases too, but... God, it's going to be so tempting just to do that. Also, I think sometimes when you're check raising a lot, like Spira has been doing, uh, and they've been kind of going back and forth, you, you end up wanting to, you know, just see if maybe the, they'll falter. But maybe right. it'd be let, better let to, to three bet the flop. Yeah, three bet the flop with sixes here. Instead, where they're check raising an ace or a flush draw or something, but do six might just be a better call. Whoa! Wow! And <laughs> did not see that coming. Pretty sick. How do you fold this? Heads up. How? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Drawing Calls dead it. completely. And wow. that will see a huge change in the chip lead. Suddenly, Joe, what have you done? VIP with the huge <laughs> he comes advantage. in here and says, Domination <laughs> Nation. I was joking. Oh, man. Look at this. Uh, Pedro Marca is down to, what is it, 7.1 million now? And Spira VIP. Close to 40 million chips. So it, it is confirmed that that's, this is the, the person that they said he was? Pretty certain it is. Shouldn't, probably still shouldn't uh -oh. say that because it's not been confirmed by our people, but it seems to be out there in the public domain. But our general policy is that unless we've had it verified by the player themselves, by our team, we prefer not to. Cool. Those are tough to take. You're playing good ball. You're just, you know, you're battling. Yeah. You even like gave up some chips and then you got it back. And then just Coolersville population you, bro. I mean, look, if you can mentally deal with that, not a crazy short stack here. 20 big blinds. Yeah. Loving Joe Stapleton and the power of positive thinking. Look, I just think I'm just want to test out my um maybe my jokes are are magic. Like I made Joe's a joke about magic jokes. It being all over, but maybe I should try a different joke. What's that, hun? You want to take me to the Playboy Mansion? I'll let you know if that works. Nine five raises. Eight seven of spades. Calls. No one thrilled with this flop. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it again. See if it works here. Well, this is over. 
They're they're off on the timing. They're out there. There we go. Bet on the turn and another pot to Spiro VIP up to nearly 42 million now. And Pierre Mark has dropped below the 20 big blind mark. Joe, that's the danger zone, right? Um, or it's approaching normal, the danger zone. Yeah. Generally, I think single digits is normally the danger zone. Between 15 and 10, you'd say they're, they're moving towards the danger zone. And then between 20 and 15 is kind of like just a sub 20 big blind stack. Not, not quite kind of, you're not really encroaching on any zone, which could be perceived as dangerous. I mean, you are, but <laughs> you have to draw a line somewhere. And I can't believe you're in the lobby. We're going you're waiting for the elevator the, to go down. <laughs> to the detail exploration, oh. all in ace queen against king three, ace high flop means we see a double up and now it's 38 million plays 9 million. Lobster says, Stames tried joking, this will go on forever. Well, this is probably going to go the distance now that there's been a double up. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. No way this ends anytime soon. Maybe someone will go all in again. I always wonder how uh, the sounds get made. You know, who who picked out the sound for this or for that? Just for like some guy in a recording studio, like dropping a bunch yeah, of chips just, on the table. <laughs> just for hours, days on end, trying to, and then finally finding it and throwing up. Yeah. It's like a playing card <laughs> against his chin or her chin. <laughs> Okay. Well, this is something. If Top we see a check raise here, draw. it could be it. About like, 420,000. Yeah. No check oh, raise. And there's the flush. Continues to run so good. Bear is going to go real big. Oh, not that big. Okay. You think you know someone, and then they go half pot, a little over <laughs> half pot. If we were right all the time, it would be boring. Or, you yeah. think you know, but you don't know, and you never will know. I mean, good news, no queen, no seven. Can Squirrel get any value here? Tries to get the oh lock. Oh, my. In. Makes wow. it look polarizing. This is tough. It is polarizing. Spurs played pretty sick. I've, I've really liked it, how aggressive he's been. And it seems like his timing on when he's decided to be aggressive with value has been pretty good. Like the six hand decides to check raise and gets a guy with do six. Two pair. Eight five versus seven five, and there's a five on the flop. PM Marco back on the arterial toward the danger zone. <laughs> okay. Diamond on the turn. Both players pick up pretty bad flush draws. You know what uh, the danger zone is like? Is like the yodeling guy on Price is Right, where like you, you pick something, it goes up, it goes yes. down, and you yes. got to... And then he falls know. over the cliff if you go too far, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's over. Or chopping. No. Okay, let's, uh, yeah. let's, let's see if this gets checked back, Joe, and let's right. see if we can sink. Let's see if we can do better. Yes, this is a chop pot, and you know what they say? Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a job pot. pot. Oh no, I blew it. I 
I got no, you're distracted. Good. Um, no, you're good. I, I honestly believe sitting that out was probably the best thing you've done all day. For the best, but I feel for like maybe I the first time ever, James, James actually just got the pacing of the song wrong. I think me and his ears screwed him up. <laughs> I still think let's get another chop pot. Price is right. Uh, Deuce on the turn. Spira's turn to make a flush. Excuse me, Marcus' turn to make a flush. While Joe's is awful, James was too quick. I'm trying to try. I'm trying to work out what the latency is. Right. I'm trying to work out what is the delay in my words leaving where I am in the PokerStars arena and arriving in Joe's part of the venue. And clearly, I grossly, grossly underestimated that gap. It was gross. Very latency gross. issues. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that can be a thing. For some reason, that makes me think of uh, some very off-topic uh, thing about the the stock market and they had these these like ai machines i'm not even sure but it was like a radio lab i listened to a while back that was like they had to have the exact same wiring because people were getting to the like to get the bids in a split second earlier because they were closer to the uh the router the stock market because of the wiring yeah or like the, the speed of going transmission crazy oh, oh boy wow okay. a flush yikes with a redraw to a straight flush versus two pair. Redraw to a full house. Crazy hand. Square of VIP, bet 641. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> All in triangle. Pierre Mark is going to call for the red triangle of death, going to make the move, going to shove. Well, it's a no, raise, does not, not all in. No shove, check raise. Let's see what happens oh, here. The last thing I'd want to see here is a turn card. Yeah. I mean, other than a plush. Other than the eight of spades, right? So how is he going to wow. respond all yeah. in? Calls, looking for a full house, six or a five. No, it's a four, and that will see no. a conclusion to this 1K PKO. We have our winner. It is Spira VIP, who takes it down. PM Marker, the runner-up in the Stadium Series heat. And when you combine the prize money and the bounties, actually not that much difference between the two of them. Spira VIP, Cashing for sixty-eight thousand dollars. PM Marker cashing for sixty grand. Well, let's look at what we've got for you tomorrow. We are going to be following day two of the freeze-out final, playing down to the final table. Plus, we've got the side men showdown, a special event kicking off tomorrow's stream. All will be explained tomorrow. Join us tomorrow, Monday, 20th of July, 11.30 Eastern, 4.30 UK, 5.30 PM, Central European Summertime. And it's important to stress, guys, that with it being day one of the freeze out final, every streamer under the sun is live right now. And if you want to watch that freeze out final, if you want to follow the guys playing the low, the medium, the high, you can watch Lex, Spraggy, Finton, Felix, so many streams going on right now for you to follow day one. We're going to pick up the action on day two. And of course, we'll have that special event for you as well. Uh, Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm thrilled to hear that we're going to have your company for the next two Sundays as well. Yeah, this this was super fun. I'm glad it uh, materialized uh, so quickly. And I'm glad to be here. This was great commentating with you guys. And Joe, as ever, I'll see you tomorrow. James, one week down. And only two and a bit more to go. The stadium series continues. Thank you very much for watching today. Uh, from the production team here, from Adam Levy, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Hartigan, it is good night from the Poker Stars Arena.